82 degrees and clear skies today in Raleigh as App State has made the trip east to challenge the NC State Wolfpack in a midweek matchup. College baseball for you today on the ACC Network. Extra beautiful day in Raleigh. It's a tough ticket to come by. Just a perfect day to sit outside and watch some college baseball. First meeting between these two teams since 2015 alongside Andrew Sensen. My name is Andrew Sanders. If you couldn't make it to the ballpark today, glad you could join us here on the ACC Network Extra. Certainly these two teams excited to be going at it, especially App State, because they did not get a chance to play over the weekend. Yeah, and that's something that they're going to have to deal with. And, you know, every team has to deal with it this year. But I, I know those guys are excited to get back on the field and, and look at someone and compete against them. Uh, meanwhile, NC State had a home series against Clemson. And Terrell Tatum got a big hit in the bottom of the eighth inning for the Wolfpack uh, to be able to salvage a win in the series against Clemson as we are underway. Getting started a little early, 6-0-1. Peyton Idle in a 1-1 count against Chris Villeman. So App State coming off a of COVID pause uh, now Fortunately, they were not the team that was really affected by it, but obviously it affects your schedule. So you're still able to practice and do all those things, but without competition over the weekend and going up against the reigning ACC Pitcher of the Week in Chris Villeman. He was absolutely unhittable against UNCG last Tuesday. Yeah, it was a UNCG team that put up 16 runs against NC State earlier on in the season. So for him to go into UNC Greensboro and absolutely shut them down nine innings, you know, it, it was the, one of the most impressive starts I've seen from an NC State pitcher in a very long time. Complete game shutout, just a one hitter. He struck out a career high nine. He's behind 3 1 counts. And Peyton Idle thought that ball was high. Home plate umpire John Byrne says it's a strike just above the belts. Jamie Roebuck's at first, Lindy Hall is at third. There's your umpire and crew. And the payoff pitch, she walked him. And so Peyton Idle is aboard. And the leadoff hitter making a, a nice splash since he has been put into this role. Uh, he has now reached in eight straight games. Yeah, and that's exactly what, you know, App State is going to need to do. They're going to need to work counts. You know, they can't be too aggressive into where they're chasing balls outside the zone, you know, especially coming off a week where you're not seeing really live pitching. You know, you, you can inner squat all you want, but once you get into a game situation, it's a lot different. So that's a good start for App State. Bunt popped up and over the netting. Bailey Welch, senior hitting 302. He's been on a hot streak. And so they move him up in the order. Welch, the senior from Granite Falls, North Carolina, not butting this time, instead taking strike two. In 20 of the 23 games for Appalachian State this year, uh, Welch has been the nine-hole hitter. But over the last nine games, he's hitting almost 400, and so uh, that's kind of kind of forced Kermit Smith's hand to say, hey, we're going to have to move him up in the lineup. Yeah, rightfully so, right? You deserve that spot. You, you see what you can do, and... I mean, that's exactly what you're trying to do. If you're coming into a season where you, the unknown is, you know, it could be every week to where we may play, we may not play, whatever it may be, you just try to go out and have yourself good games, and that's exactly what Welch has done so far. Nothing and two on the shortstop. He struck him out. First strikeout for Chris Villeman. Get a look at the support behind Villeman. Hasn't needed it yet with a walk and a strikeout. But Butler, McDonough, and Brown in the outfield. Jose Torres, the shortstop, along with JT Jarrett up the middle. Void to Menchik, Austin Murray at the corners. And Luca Tresh behind the plate. Saw Torres and the center fielder McDonough there. This NC State defense very strong. Uh, up the middle, really a strong defense all around. These are two very good defensive teams going at it today. 
Yeah, and I mean, that's the one thing that NC State's really pride themselves on. I think that's where they've gotten to in the last week or so, trying to catch a groove, you know, obviously sweeping in or, uh, Carolina. I think they're the pitchers are feeling more comfortable to pitch a contact, and that's the biggest thing that you see. It's, you know, once you're able to be in the zone and, and work fast and you keep these fielders engaged in the game, and that's, you know, where they've really thrived in the last week or so. Pretty healthy lead at first. Villeman comes home, and the pitch just misses. Second baseman, Luke Drumheller. Leads the team in average. He does have a very healthy lead over there. Yeah. Wouldn't be surprised if you see some long holds here from Billman. Try to catch him off guard, change up his, his timing a little bit over there first base. App State as a team can be dangerous. Stealing bases, 26 for 30 as a team. Idle is one for one. So Villeman trying to follow up the performance of a of a career. Yeah, really. Luck. <laughs> I mean, it doesn't be get hard. any better than that. It's going to be hard to top that one. Yeah, worked around a, a double. A leadoff double in the third inning, and that was really the only trouble that he, that he got into against UNCG. He did have the three walks, so he allowed four base runners in total. Uh, but it was just a, a situation where he got he started off the game good yep. and got better as the game went along. And I think for him, it, he's really starting to understand how to pitch. You know, he's not an overpowering guy. He's going to be in the low 90s, upper 80s, but he just knows how to pitch now. And I think that's what's really changed for him. You see him changing eye levels. He'll work inside, outside parts of the plate. I, I think he just is becoming a all-around better pitcher uh, in the sense that, you know, he's just starting to understand the game more, and that's what's really helped him, obviously, last week um, to, to get the, the stats that he has put up in the last week or so. Ball and two strikes on Drum Heller. Ball in the dirt. And Tresh's throw is high, and that'll let Idle scoot into second base. Well, that was, we, we said he had an aggressive lead. That was aggressive base running as well. And probably a play that Tresh wants back, because I think if he makes an accurate throw there, he, he's able to get Idle at that okay. second. Lazy fly ball in the shallow left. Johnny Butler makes the catch for out number two. So Villeman once again pitching to contact. And as you said, that's where, you know, trusting the, the solid defense uh, behind him, NC State pitching it, because it wasn't just Villeman. I mean, that was the story the whole weekend. You saw that graphic we just showed. Reed Johnston with the complete game. Uh, so two different pitchers throwing a complete game. And, and really the other guys on that weekend against Carolina very well could have uh, thrown a complete game as well, if not for weather. I think you could have seen one from Sam Highfill. And he, he saw 28 outs on Monday from uh, Matt Willitson. So he, that doesn't go down as a complete game, but it was it was more than. I was going to say that might have been more impressive than Villeman's start, you know, coming in and getting 28 outs on a Monday. Kendall McGowan takes a look at strike one. But for Villeman, you said he's he's really understanding how to pitch. It's all about you know his fastball command. Obviously, you don't throw a complete game unless you are pounding the strike zone. A hundred percent. And that's exactly what he's he's starting to do. He you know he doesn't work. His misses aren't you know complete misses. They are they're a ball or two off the plate, and that's exactly where you want to be if you're a pitcher because then that's that's forcing the hand of the batter to you know kind of reach outside the zone a little bit because. You may get those calls, you know, in college baseball. You may get the ball off the plate. So now it's forcing a, a offensive team to do a little bit different things. 
Nothing in two on the App State left fielder. McGowan gives this one a ride. Butler on the run, reaches up and makes the catch just before colliding with the wall. So McGowan, solid contacts. And there's that solid defense for NC State, saving a run. No score between App State and NC State here in the bottom of the first inning. And the starter for the Mountaineers is Quentin Martinez, the 6'4 senior from Orlando. Get a look at his numbers on the year. Yeah, 36 innings. This is a guy that can go deep into games, although, again, because App State did not compete over the weekend, Martinez, the usual Saturday starter, he's a guy that could give you seven or eight. That's not what they're looking for today. No, you know, they're just trying to get him some work today and then, you know, get him out of this ball game. The biggest thing that I see out of Quentin Martinez is the strikeouts to walk ratio, 25 to nine right there. Like you say, he's going to be in the zone. He, he likes to, you know, work the bottom half of the zone, so... You know, he, like I said, he's going to get his work in today and then and get out and pass it on to the next guy. This should be a Johnny Holstaff type of day for App State. That's how they have approached midweeks this year. So it'll be a, a bullpen, a by committee approach against this NC State batting order. And a couple of changes for head coach Elliot Avin is uh, you see Tyler McDonough switch hitting center fielder. He'll bat second. Uh, JT Jarrett as the leadoff man, Austin Murr, will slide to the cleanup spot. Uh, he had been the leadoff man, but one of the, the national players of the week uh, for what he did uh, in this past week. Extra base hits has been the name of his game in the past several games, and so they're going to put him in the middle of the order and see if he can mash. Yeah, and I think that's the right move because now it gives a little bit of protection to Luca Tresh as well, so you have to pitch him differently. Um, you know, I, I just love how Austin Murr approaches the game itself. He, he loves to go out there, compete, have fun, and um, right now it, it's working for him. He's been kind of the spark plug behind this NC State offense. First pitch fastball strike from Martinez to JT Jarrett. Hitting at a 266 clip, but had a, a really nice weekend against Clemson so that that batting average has gone up uh, we we're talking about you know in the last half inning Bailey Welch being the nine hole hitter getting an opportunity to move up same thing for JT Jarrett just trying to find pieces that fit the puzzle right I mean you can change your lineups all you want and, and you find something that works and I think NC State kind of has you know good pieces put together JT Jarrett drives one right there off the left field wall, McGowan's throw into second is a good one. Close play, and it got him. What a play. NC State is going to challenge Jarrett. Thrown out at second base. And yeah, you got to point to the left fielder, McGowan, there. He played this, again, on the road. Uh, this, is, this is not easy. Hey, he played it off the wall perfectly. Yeah, that's as perfect as you could possibly play that ball for not even just trying to get a better look at that right there. But you see right here, McGowan does a great job. He knows he's not going to catch it. You see a lot of guys try to go make that catch. Bare hand, perfect throw into second base. See if the play stands. So again, the call in the field out at second base. Currently, it is a a single, and then what? Seven to four, I believe it was Drumheller who made the tag. And if you're JT Jarrett, you know. You have you're not the catcher. You're the leadoff guy, and you go. I got to get two two out of this. Yeah, that's. I mean, it's the right play by JT Jarrett too. You're you're full speed to second base, no matter what on that ball to you know left field. What do you think? Right Slow there, motion. Or, right there. If we get a zoom in, I'm I'm not sure if we can or not. But this isn't an episode of CSI. You can't <laughs> just say enhance. I, I was trying. <laughs> How about this, different angle. That's close. Bang, bang. His left hand. Just not sure if that's getting in before the tag. Well, elbow guard goes flying. I think it's too close to tell. 
think the play will stand. Locked off by it right so you're, here. So you're saying it's maybe closer than you thought, but, but nothing changes your mind to say he was definitely in there safe. Not by the looks that we have seen. What yeah, they're, they're showing. And by the way, you're getting the same look that uh, our umpiring crew is getting. So they're just going through every angle right now saying, yep, okay, you know, this angle is not going to show anything different. I think that center field angle is going to be the best angle that they'll be able to tell from. Now, right here, you can see how far the, the swipe has to come from, from see, right Trump there, Heller. Right? It's almost like his left hand is on the bag. I think from this angle, yeah, I think I think he is safe, but I'm not sold that they're going to overturn it based on that. <laughs> what do we know, right? Lindy Hall made the call. One thing I know for sure, it's just a perfect play by McGowan. I mean, perfect. just a, a, a laser accurate throw, and there was no wasted motion, no wasted time. Well, they're going to overturn it, stay safe. I thought from that last look, you could see that, yes. that Jarrett is on the bag and, and the swipe hasn't quite been applied. So it'll be a leadoff double for JT Jarrett. Uh, still, though, take nothing away from, from Kendall McGowan. Even to make that even remotely close. No, that's a perfect play. There's nothing else he can have done to, to make it any better. So. But once again, it's JT Jarrett being that little leadoff guy for NC State to put them in a good position here in the first inning. Leadoff double, and now Tyler McDonough takes the ball away. Liberty Township, Ohio, just outside of Cincinnati. Look at his numbers on the year. Trying to bunt for a base hit. He's got good speed and not handled cleanly. Martinez. See how they rule that. Going to rule it as a bunt single. It was going to be close even if he fields this well. Let's That's, see. Yeah, it's such a hard play for a left-handed pitcher to make. As he's throwing, he's falling off towards the third baseline, so he has to change direction. Even that flip right there for him would be a tough one. Nice bunt by McDonough. You see, you've seen that a lot from NC State. You know, a couple bunt hits in the last couple you know, games that they've played. They are not afraid to go to the small ball. Luka Tresh, the batter, with runners on the corner. Still nobody out. And he's beaten there by a Martinez fastball. And Luka Tresh. Sophomore looks down to third base coach Chris Hart. They actually attended the same high school down in Florida. So that kind of alerted Coach Hart to, you know, hey, there's there's a guy down here. He's pretty good. Check him out. I think it's paid off for him so and, far. Uh, and yeah, for sure. But you're talking about NC State using the bunt. That's that's part of the strategy for Coach Ava and Coach Hart is really good team speed. And so a lot of times you can try to bunt, and it's not so much a sacrifice situation. It's a, hey, worst case scenario, it turns into a sacrifice. But, you know, we've got the speed to, to beat this out. Nothing in two. And a throw down. And McDonough is a guy that they don't mind putting in motion. Tresh softly hit to second. And the only play is going to be to first. So Tresh drives in JT Jarrett. And advances McDonough to second. I know he won't be happy with the outcome of his at bat, but what a great job just putting the ball in play, making something happen. You know you have some good speed at first base, and McDonough 
they're giving up the run early on in the game. You can take runs whenever you get them. Nice job getting JT Jarrett in to make it one nothing. So now, Austin Murr. We mentioned him earlier. The National Players of the Week with one out. McDonough on first. A good stop by Hayden Cross behind home plate. So Murr hit 370 with 10 hits over six games. Seven of the 10 hits for extra bases, including three home runs. So when 70% 70, 70 of your, your <laughs> output is extra base hits, you hit three bombs. Uh, that'll earn you some accolades, and, and also that'll earn you a look and say, and like you said, uh, just as much about protection for, for Luca Tresh. Yeah, I think it just, I mean, I think just the way he's approached the game this year, um, you know, like all these guys, you know, they, they've come back, and when something's taken away from you, you don't realize how much you miss it. So I think he's having the most fun out here. I think it's really freed him up. Just a high fly ball right there to left field. Welch goes out, makes a pretty tough catch there for out number two. So two out now, McDonough still on second. It's the App State shortstop, Bailey Welch made the play. Here comes the NC State shortstop, Jose Torres. Saw he and Elliot Avent sharing a hug and some laughs uh, just before first pitch here today. His batting average is starting to creep up to where, you know, he, he's starting to get a lot more comfortable missing some early games with an oblique issue. But I think his at-bats recently have been fantastic. Just seeing the ball a lot better, barreling up a lot more baseballs. Oh, they're happy to have him back in the lineup and healthy. Yeah, he like McDonough with some serious pro potential. And the biggest thing for Torres is that he projects as a shortstop yeah. at the big league level, where a lot of guys, you know, you have to move him to second, maybe to third, maybe play outfields. But but the glove plays for him at, at the highest of levels. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, Trey Turner, first rounder, Will Wilson, first rounder. And I think he has, Torres has the best defensive skills out of both of those guys. Yeah. I think those guys had the other attributes and, and whatnot that went along with their, you know, their talent. But defensively speaking, I think he is the, the most natural shortstop that we've seen at NC State. Well, he's the only guy that, that started there as a freshman. He really reminds me of, you know, a guy I played with, Chris Diaz, also brother Jonathan Diaz. But just fundamentally very sound. They don't make mistakes. Such good hands. Martinez way ahead here, nothing in two. Trying to finish off the inning. Weak contact towards second. And Drumheller ends the inning. NC State on the board first. JT Jarrett, an overturned uh, double to lead things off, and Trash drives him in. Back with Andrew Sensen. My name is Andrew Sanders through one inning. NC State leads App State 1-0. Be the five, six, seven hitters due up for the Mountaineers. Robbie Young gets the party started here in the top of the second against Chris Villeman. Villeman able to work around a leadoff walk back in the first inning. Going to look at Young's numbers. Senior first baseman. There's a called strike. And again, for Villeman, uh, he's got a breaking ball. He's got good feel for a changeup, uh, especially against right-handed batters, obviously. But but it, it really starts with that fastball command for him. 
And he's a guy that got better as the game went along last week against UNCG. And, and that's something that really was the scouting report on him in high school is something that scouts really marveled at is, and, and, and took note of. Is it seemed like in high school, you know, he was a guy that, that got better as games went along, and, and that gets your attention. Yeah, there's something to say about that, and it's so hard for an offensive team to, to kind of wear him down because, like you say, he gets better, he gets stronger. You can see the confidence start to build. The more he throws and, you know, the better his spots get, it's just hard to wear down a guy like that that can just challenge you for nine straight innings or however long it may be. It's just a, a tall task for an offensive team to go out and beat him. It's a unique trait because there's a lot of guys that will look like, you know, Cy Young winners in the yep. first inning. Uh, by the time you get to the third or fourth, you know, the, there's there's a few miles an hour off of that fastball that, w that was there in the first. And, and the best guys know how to tempo it out, too. Sure, so, you sure. Know, you hear of, like, the Garrett Coles and, you know, the Scherzers, whoever it may be. You know, you hear about them being like, yeah, I pace myself out. You know, then the fifth comes along, maybe the second or third time through the lineup, and I'm just, I'm out there throwing every single pitch I possibly can, and I just deal. Jose Torres covering ground, spins, and makes a great throw to first. Yeah, he makes that play look really easy, but that was several steps to his left off the bat of Young. Yeah, that ball was hit very hard, too. It's a one hopper up the middle. Two hopper. That's a nice play. Once again, it's just showing off the hands. That's that's his best best trade out there at shortstop. Good feet, working back towards first base. He's a plus plus defender. Philip Cole swings and misses. Strike one on the right fielder today for the Mountaineers. Yeah, it, you know you were saying there's been some good shortstops here at NC State and and Will Wilson for the Giants. Uh, Trey Turner, obviously, a lot of people know Trey Turner at this point. If you pay any attention at all <laughs> yeah. to Major League Baseball, you know Trey Turner. Uh, but you know, it was Will Wilson. He started as a freshman at second base. Mm -hmm. uh, Trey took over at third base uh, because you know, NC State really just didn't really have a third baseman before that. Uh, a slow one. You know, just that. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Definitely slow. <laughs> uh, the guy to my right was the third baseman before Trey Turner showed up, and all of a sudden it was – it was time maybe to, to think about a position change for you. I mean, I just said that. <laughs> if his bat is going to be that good, might as well put him in the lineup somewhere, right? I was a team guy, and I moved for him. Hey. That's what team guys do. Good for you, man. It seemed to work that out. Doesn't, that doesn't surprise me at all. You know, you're, you're a good dude. <laughs> it, seemed, it seemed to work out yeah. for us and him. <laughs> but, but that is really saying something if he is, you know, the, the top defender is – Villeman with his second strikeout of the game as he gets Cole and now looking to get the left-handed batting catcher Hayden Cross from nearby Sanford. Look at his numbers on the season. Gotta love a left-handed batting catcher. Nice swing too. That's the hard thing about, you know, the inconsistency of this year for App State. They've had a couple of games where they've missed it, missed, you know, playing in a midweek game, whatever it may be. So it's just hard to get these numbers up for them as an offensive team. I think they're a very good offensive team, putting some good swings on Villeman today so far. Just need some consistency in this, in this season. So you're saying the eye test, what you've seen so far, yeah, it's I better mean, than numbers. Oh, 100%. I mean, they're putting good swings on fastballs, which is what you need to do. Aggressive in fastball counts, and right now it's 2-2 two -two count. See how he battles. Philemon got him swinging. So three up, three down in the second for the Mountaineers, and Villeman records strikeout number three. App State and NC State doing battle today. There's fifth-year coach Kermit Smith. Very successful in D2 with Belmont Abbey. And at Lander made three College World Series in total who are taking over at App State. And he had this team rolling along uh, towards the end of last year. Had won nine of their last ten to close out the year last season. 
uh, including beating a ranked Wake Forest team. And coming here to Raleigh today, bullpen day as expected. Noah Hall, one of the best out of the pen for the Mountaineers. ERA under two and a half. And so we knew that the plan was Martinez, Hall probably for an inning each. And uh, and from then, it's it's any, it's anybody's guess. I mean, you got a lot of guys that wanted some work over the weekend, didn't get it. So uh, we could see quite a few pitching changes today. See, I think my pitching box in my scorecard is going to be filled <laughs> I, up and, yeah, yeah. and overflown I today. Think you might might run out of some room there. But you see that quite a bit in college baseball, especially during midweek. Yeah, hundred percent. And, and even more so, I think, this year as Johnny Butler will lead off the Wolfpack half of the second inning. one nothing, NC State leading. An RBI ground out by Luca Tresh. Scored JT Jarrett in the first inning. I think even more so this year because, you know, in past years, there are some week in, weeks where you would play Tuesday and Wednesday. Yep. And, and you don't necessarily need a bullpen day when, when you play back-to-back -back like that. Uh, but... This year, you're not seeing that. You're playing at most one one time in a midweek, and some weeks you're not playing a midweek at all. So uh, when you do have those midweeks, it, it, that seems to be the case even more. And you're year. trying, to, you're just trying to get guys, you know, innings. That, that's the biggest thing. You're trying to get young guys innings to see what you have when you get into conference play. You, you just you need to experiment throughout your midweeks because that's the only really chance that you get to put them in, you know, high leverage situations. So that'll land in the green grass section. Not a bad spot today up there in those bleachers. Beautiful night here in Raleigh. Yeah, 82 degrees. And I love the 6 o'clock timing, too, because you can, you can get a little sun, but at the same time, I'm not worried too much about the sunscreen. Butler in the left center. And it'll be LeShock who gets it. Oh, pardon me, LeShock. I tell you, this timing is a lot better than the 920 tip off for the national championship <laughs> game on a Monday night. <laughs> I can tell you that right now. Oh, man. It's past my bedtime. You're not that old yet. You just no regard for the West Coast at all. No, I don't. Voita Menchik with the shift on against him. Three infielders on the left side against the NC State third baseman. Well, you know, you have a newborn, so you're probably up at all hours anyway. <laughs> so being up at midnight to watch the game is probably nothing new anyways, no. right? Uh, no, he was sound asleep at 8, and I was short there after him. <laughs> Hall deals outside a ball and a strike. I don't know if it makes you feel any better. The game was, in was, some ways, over by 10. Yeah, I, I saw the highlights of it, so I was kind of happy I went to bed and didn't stay up and watch it. Baylor just dominating that game. I think, I think Baylor surprised some people. Right into the shift, deep in the hole. Welch's throw is on the money for out number two. Yeah, really nice play over there by Welch. Nice job of setting the feet and making a good throw over to first base in the hole. That could be a tough one for a shortstop. It was one of those, obviously, Gonzaga's undefeated. And people talk about the West Coast Conference. They haven't played anybody. They played a tough non-conference schedule. They did, yeah. Um, and so you're thinking, surely this isn't a blowout, right? But uh, Baylor, Baylor was simply just too good defensively, good. too good on the boards. That Big 12, it's a different conference basketball-wise. Terrell Tatum, the Wolfpack hero from Sunday. That eighth inning, two RBI single to beat the Clemson Tigers. Tatum hitting in the eight hole today as the designated hitter. Base is empty here, two outs. And a good inning of work for Hall so far. He misses down 2-0. Oh. But yeah, surprised a lot of people. 
I will go ahead and say that I did have Baylor in my bracket. Mm. So Winning it all. It didn't surprise me. Uh, Professional. But I didn't. I also didn't have Gonzaga getting that far, so, you know. <laughs> Nobody had a perfect bracket, so let's not brag some. too much about it, you know. But, yeah, I did I did have Baylor. Yo, I did have him in the final. That counts for anything. My final was correct. Wow. It's about the only thing I was correct out of the whole bracket, yeah. On the one hand, you kind of hate when the final is chalk like that, but mm -hmm. but it does set up for a big matchup where you say, hey, look, these have been the best two teams all year. It should be a good yep. championship game. And not, not necessarily the case. <laughs> it was good for Baylor fans, for sure. There's a strike into Tatum. Make it three and one. Tatum making his 18th start of the season today. Three homers, 12 runs batted in. And in a hitter's count here. a pretty good 3-1 pitch. Yeah, not bad right there. A little bit up. That's what Terrell Tame thought it was, but up underneath the hands, that's a good location. If you're going to miss anywhere. You want to miss up underneath the hands to a lefty, especially Tatum seeing the ball really well right now for NC State. So Tatum works a two-out walk. And gives Devontae Brown a chance here in this second inning. I really like that sequence right there. Obviously getting down 3-0 is not ideal for him, but coming back, fastballs on the inside part of the play and then drops that changeup. Changeup has some good depth onto it. Nice job by Tatum. Like I said, just seeing the ball really well right now for NC State. Kind of struggled early on in the season, but starting to figure it out. Look to see if he gets to getting some movement on on the base pass here for NC State, getting the scoring position. Yeah, immediately a throw over. He didn't even have time to, oh, well, he did, okay. So he and got stuck in the dirt right there. I was there. gonna say, it was unwrapped. I, I was gonna say he didn't have time to wrap it, but he did, it just unraveled. The old oven mitt on the hand. You see a lot of baseball players going to now. Not something you used. You weren't exactly known for your <laughs> no. your base stealing anyway. That would have been pure looks yeah. for me. Yeah. <laughs> well, you know, it's baseball, it's superstition, you know. It is. I mean, I, I I've always thought, you know, the the old oven mint gives you it gives inches. you a little yeah, you get into the bag a little quicker, don't you? Yeah, I, I could agree with that. Maybe I should have used it. I don't think those were around when I played. Yeah. I don't think that was a thing. Nothing and one on Devontae Brown, and he drives this into center field. Long run for Layshock. He's looking up. It will disappear over the center field fence. Devontae Brown, home run number three of the season. That ball was hammered. Hammered, and you see a big smile from Devontae Brown, a guy who's just been struggling this year, and finally gets a fastball down his zone. This is exactly what he did last year. He was able to drive fastballs out of the ballpark. That is middle, middle, at the knees, and that ball goes a long way here at Doak Field. A bit of sigh of relief right there for Devontae Brown. So how about that? The bottom of the order for NC State. You know, base is empty, two out walk. How about that stat right there? At least one home run in 17 of the last 22 games for NC State. They're averaging over one per game, about one and a third per game. We were busy before talking about the small ball that they've been playing over the that, last week and a half. And that's why this was a team that was, you know, projected to be a regional host, um, a top 16 team. Yeah, they just have it all. I mean, they had the depth 
I think, you know, guys obviously coming off the bench haven't really been able to play that much because you, your mainstay guys have been in the lineup. But, I mean, I, I just think they, they overall, they have a very good offense. It, it's starting to click now. Uh, early on, they, they struggled a little bit, obviously facing some tough ACC opponents. But they're starting to figure it out. And let's see if we can throw up that graphic there again. Um, one of the best lineups in the ACC, and it's the versatility of it. It's the you can hit home runs, and and look, nothing against Wake Forest, but you've been to that ballpark. Uh, uh, I think flies. you kind of have to you kind of have to take Wake out of it. FSU, Notre Dame, okay, but that's just that that Wake team has had some really good offenses have, in, yep. in recent years. Don't get me wrong, but okay. even even a by Wake standards a mediocre Wake offense is still going to be towards the tops in numbers, uh, just by virtue of the ballpark. Yeah, their ballpark it is a great stadium, nice stadium. You know, new turf and whatnot. Put put in a lot of money into it too, but that ball absolutely flies out of that place. Ball and two strikes on Jarrett, make it two and two. But that's the versatility, and for NC State, you know, a team that, that can hit the long ball, that can mm -hmm. play small ball. Uh, they've got some really good starting pitching. And really, it's the bullpen that's that's the, the question mark, still trying to figure that out. Should end the inning. In the left, McGowan. Makes the catch, and that will finish off the inning. But the Wolfpack not going quiet here in the second. Two-out walk brings up Devontae Brown, and he hits home run number three. <laughs> NC State, App State have not met since March 4th, 2015. A 6-4 to four victory for NC State here in Raleigh. 17th meeting all-time between these two teams. NC State leads 13-3 to three overall. Kind of surprising they haven't played since since 2015. I mean, it, it's not the shortest drive. I would say it's about a what, three-hour drive from Boone. Yeah, maybe, maybe 315. That's a long... I, I mean, I guess, you know... Probably Wilmington for NC State, it's two and a half. ECU, I never knew where I was when I played ECU in the, in the state of North Carolina. Not too bad of a drive as Layshock flies out to Devontae Brown to start the third. Eight, nine, and one due up. So Layshock out to Brown, and it'll bring up Andrew Terrell, the designated hitter. Terrell from Franklin, North Carolina. Stands in. Looks at a ball. I guess just low. Yeah, it's not a not a not a bad trip. Although when you're talking about three plus hours, obviously you gotta show up a couple hours early. You gotta play a baseball game. That's another three plus hours. So I mean it can it can make for a long day. Uh, but it is a a game that has been played now 17 times. First time ever later this year. NC State's going to make a return trip. And we'll play up there in the mountains of Boone. Beautiful stadium up there in the mountains as well. I've only seen pictures. Never been, but from pictures, it looks absolutely gorgeous. Well, have you been to Boone in general? I've been to Beach Mountain. So, yes, I've been through Boone, which is, I mean, it's, I was not staying there, but it seemed like a great town to go oh, to school in. Outstanding. Outstanding, especially, especially when the weather starts getting nice. I mean, you don't want like the negative ten I'm snow. From, I'm from North Carolina, so I, I can't do too much cold. But you know, if you give me you know sixty plus degrees and, the and some good hiking, absolutely. Yeah, it's perfect. Great Terrell, like drawing a walk. Second base runner allowed by Chris Villeman. Second walk. And here comes the other guy that he walked, Peyton Idle. And again, Villeman's 
not a guy that, that walks a ton. I mean, he's constantly around the plate. You look at all of his misses. I think you made a great point earlier. He's a guy that, that when he does miss, it's it's not by a lot. Yeah. He's constantly around the plate. That usually kind of gives you a little leeway uh, with the umpire. Yeah, that falls on Luca Tresh and whoever's behind the dish. You know, you got to talk, talk to the umpire, become best friends with him, get those calls for your pitcher. There's a good spot right there on the inside part of the plate. But that's, that's all on Luca Tresh tonight. Peyton Idle starting at third base. He is from Advance, North Carolina. And sometimes, you know, coaches just make a move and and it works out. And Kermit Smith pushing the right buttons. Put Idle at third base and he's made a big difference. That's exactly what Villman's trying to do. That's the spot right there. That is the spot. That that ball is probably, a, I would say, a ball and a half off the black. That's one where if you're, you know, talking to the umpire or, or whatever it might be, just catch it a little bit differently, you're going to get that spot. Strike him out, throw down to second. They will not throw him out. Really nice jump by Terrell to be able to steal second. That's strikeout number four for Villeman. Yeah, like you said, perfect jump and goes off first move. As soon as Villeman's lifting that knee, he is taken off. Nice job getting in scoring position. Fourth, the stolen base of the year for Terrell. And now Bailey Welch. An opportunity. Runner in scoring position with two away. And, well, with the guy that has been pitching as well as Villeman has... These are the opportunities you really got to come up big. As Villeman steps off. Welch has played around the infields in his App State career. He's played third. He's played second. But he's replacing Luke Allison at shortstop this year. And he has really settled in to be that guy, the everyday shortstop. Yeah, you've already seen him make a couple of nice plays tonight. Yeah. He just has really good footwork. And that's that's really what an infielder needs, right? It, you know, you have the arms or whatever it is. But if your feet are good, you can, you can play any position. Long run for Butler here down the line. Runs out of real estate. Welch went to South Caldwell High School. Same high school as Madison Bumgarner. Good tie-in right there. Pretty good baseball player. I'd say he's all right. <laughs> Doing decent in big leagues. And right now, pitcher, batter, the rhythm. Nobody's on the same page. A step off, then a step out of the box. Popped up. Ben Sheik. It's in the inning. So, a one-out walk, but again, no damage for Chris Villeman. NC State leads 3-0 through two and a half. NC State and App State meeting, and uh, certainly a special, special game for the Arnolds. Cameron of NC State, Carson of App State. That's got to be uh, cool, seeing your, seeing your brother. Yeah, a twin brother on the other side. That would be really cool. Most of the time, you see a lot of twins go to the same school. Yeah. But also, 
you know, you got to give them credit. Sometimes sometimes guys will perfectly, purposely go to different schools just to, to be able to branch out a little bit yeah. uh, from one another. And that's uh, obviously a special bond with uh, with any set of brothers, but especially twins. I, not that not that I would know or or you would know. No, I didn't. Uh, but if you talk to twins, they will tell you it's <laughs> it's just you know it's just different. Tyler McDonough leading things off. McDonough, Tresh, and Murr. So the Arnold starting their freshman campaigns. And they get to meet twice in a year. Well, McDonough, the bunt single in the first. And that extends his on-base streak once again. Thirty-nine straight games. Very impressive for the young man. Like we said, you know, we've talked about before it's NC State's happy to have him back with the shortened draft this year. This, you know, it could have been a guy who went kind of the middle round of the draft last year as a junior, able to come back, keep developing developing himself. He's just a gamer. I, I think when you you know describe a guy who just goes out and plays the game the right way, you, you're going to think of Tyler McDonough. Does everything right. Plays the game hard. Happens to barrel up a lot of baseballs as well. Yeah, no doubt. The hit today has bumped up his average to 314. Coach Avon says he's maybe the best defensive outfielder that he's ever coached. And is a guy that didn't have more than a couple innings worth of outfield experience when he came to NC State. He's just that good of an athlete. Yeah, you've seen a lot of those guys come through NC State over the last couple of years, too. And, and NC State has had tremendous center fielders, um, you know, in the past probably five to ten years. Leadoff walk for McDonough. I mean, talking of the athleticism, I mean, before, before each game, the team will huddle up, and then McDonough and Devontae Brown will – I'm not even athletic enough to tell you exactly what it is. I think it's a round off into a backflip. There's a backflip involved. It might be a uh, – I don't, I don't know. Handspring, do you know? <laughs> no, I have no idea. I've only seen it once when they were only in the backflip action, so I thought it was just a backflip, but well, I'll go with whatever you just said. Here's what they do pregame. Yeah, nice. so it finishes, but I believe the, the, the first little, like, cartwheel into it, I think, is the round off, maybe? Yeah, well, anyone uh, gymnastic fans out there? Look, the only time I've ever done a backflip time. in my life was on a <laughs> was on a trampoline or off of a diving board, okay? Yeah. No, nothing else. So off of the ground, no, no way. No flat ground backflips for you? <laughs> no. But that's a pretty cool. I mean, baseball players are super superstitious too, right? So oh, that yeah. that is an every oh, game yeah. pregame routine for those guys. A strike thrown to Luca Tresh. Also, shout out to our crew because that's not we did not plan that. No, we did not they, plan that. They just had that ready to go. I'm glad their superstitions are doing that kind of stuff. Mine was like wearing the same socks ten days in a row. So nothing athletic. That's. Just <laughs> I don't know if that helps you at all. It might. <laughs> and at, the, at the time, it that's did. That's the perfect. <laughs> that it really just sums up the baseball player's superstitious mind. Is oh yeah, it might. Hey, it might help me. It may help. I mean, if I'm going in games, getting some hits, something's staying the same throughout <laughs> until that until those hit, hits end. I don't know if the socks are giving me the power, but they might be. They might be. Three and one on Tresh. Well, Noah Hall walked a man, gave up a home run in the second. A leadoff walk here. He's got to be careful with Tresh in this count. I was going to say, you're expecting a big swing from Tresh right here if he gets a fastball out over the middle of the plate. Oh, 
Could be two. Step on the bag for one, and it will be. So in a 3-1 count, and Hall gets best case scenario there as Drumheller helps him out. It's a great spot by Hall. It's on the outside part of the plate. Tresh sees fastball, knows he's thinking fastball. Just unable to do anything with it. Pulls off of it a little bit too early, and that's something that happens when you know you get into a hitter's count and you get a little bit too excited when you see the pitch that you're looking for. Sometimes you get ahead of yourself and right there, ground into a 4-6-3 double play. Back from the windup with the bases empty. Now a ball and a strike on Austin Murr. Just inside two and one. Elevated fastball. Couldn't put it in play. D1 Baseball said Austin Murr, one of the top first basemen in the country coming into this year. Drives one into right field. Ballpark's going to hold it, though. And Cole on the run has it to end the inning. So a double play ball helping out Hall, and he allows no runs in the third. Through three innings, it's 3 nothing NC State, and Chris Villeman back on the bump for the Wolfpack. Drumheller's first pitch swing sends Torres into shallow left field, but uh, he is comfortable from there. It, it seems like anywhere on the left side of the diamond, sometimes even behind the second base bag, uh, he's just going to make the play. He is saying, rock solid. Yeah, that's exactly the same play he made earlier on in the game. It's just a... You know, one or two hopper up the middle that he's just able. He gets to his first step is is the quickest that I've seen, and that's what really sets him apart from other shortstops in you know this conference and in the country. It's his first step. He's able to get to the ball, left or right side of him. Impressive stuff. Kendall McGowan has had a a, a game of almost so far. He drove a ball into left, and Johnny Butler reached up at the wall and took away extra bases from him. And then in the bottom half of the inning, made a great throw off a great hop off the wall, judged it perfectly to throw out JT Jarrett initially as he goes down swinging. Tresh will fire to first to get the out. Strikeout number five for Villeman, by the way. And so baseball is a cruel game like that. I mean, for, for McGowan, you look and you're going to say, well, he's 0 for 2 with the strikeout. <laughs> uh, I mean, he's he's made some, some really, he made really great contact in the first, a great defensive play. The call was overturned. It's just, it's been a, a, a night of almost for him so far. Yeah, and that's, that's baseball to a T, right? It doesn't, you know, it doesn't care what you've done. It doesn't give you anything back. You just got to keep working and hope something falls for you. I mean, when you're facing Villeman, you get that nasty slider, it's, not much you could do about that. But yeah, like you said, I mean, perfect throw from left field. Complete line drive by, caught by Butler. Doesn't get much better. Rolled over to the right side. That's an easy inning for Chris Villeman. And again, that's what he did last week. He got better as the game got along. He rolls through the fourth.
Bottom of the fourth inning, back with Andrew Sensen. I'm Andrew Sanders. It's been a good baseball game so far. Sit back, enjoy watching this one. Jason Kornatzer is in, making his eighth appearance of the season. The right-hander, 19 strikeouts compared to just four walks. He has been one of the top options out of the Mountaineer bullpen. The redshirt junior from Waxhaw, North Carolina. Didn't pitch last year. Four starts, 19 appearances back in 2019. So he is the third pitcher used for App State. Comes out for the fourth, facing Torres, Butler, and Minshik. Well, Torres has impressed tonight with his glove. 0 for 1 so far at the plate. That's a good slider right there, lead it off. That's what App needs to do. They need to stay in this ball game, kind of just chip away at the lead. Keep them under, I would say, five runs tonight. Your offense has a chance to just, like I said, stay in the game, chip away, get one here, get one there. Maybe at the end of the ball game, you're, you're right there, ready to roll. It's right about what they average, 5.1 runs per game for App State. Ball and a strike on the NC State shortstop. Slider stays up this time. Hard hit. Kornatzer knocks it down. Might have a chance here. Torres will beat it out. So he's got himself an infield single to lead off the Wolfpack. Half of the fourth inning. Getting a look at it right here, and there's nothing that you can do. Ah, yeah, it just hits off the middle of the glove. Thought he may have a good play, but better idea just to hold on to that baseball. You see a lot of pitchers usually try to rush that throw, and then they throw it away, and all of a sudden you're you're giving a double or a triple. Good idea. Hold on to that ball, and you know you keep yourself in double play depth. In the dirt, smothered by Hayden Cross. Johnny Butler's been the cleanup man all year for Elliott Ava. Slides down to the sixth spot today. NC State scored one in the first, two in the second. Got nothing in the third off of a leadoff walk after a double play. But once again, threatening here in the fourth. There have been no easy innings for App State pitching so far. That leadoff single by Butler is going to make things a little tougher here for the right-hander Kornatzer. Talk about how hard it is for an offense to kind of get in rhythm. You know, obviously, App State has been going the Johnny Holstaff on their midweek games. It's so hard for an offense to, to stay in rhythm when you're seeing a different arm. You're not getting the looks that you normally would with a guy staying in the game. I thought NC State's done a pretty good job so far of having good at bats against this App State pitching staff. You know, with already seeing now their third pitcher of the night. 
Yeah, hitting is hard enough. Yeah. Usually it helps when you go, okay, I at least have, you know, this is my third time seeing this guy. I have a, a general idea of what it looks like. Good and spot. was that gloved? Yes, it was by Cross, so a foul tip. We'll put away Butler. But on a on a night like this, you're not going to see a guy two times no. uh, in a row unless unless you have a, a huge inning. You probably won't see him then either because they're just going to bring in somebody new. Yeah, it's just a, you know, kind of floodgates open up with pitching, especially like you said this year with COVID and, and having just so many guys in the bullpen that you can throw and need to get innings. Right there, that's a great spot against Butler. He missed his spot and set up on the outside part of the plate, crossed behind a dish, but... Able to hit the inside part of the plate and, and get Butler for strike three. These two teams will meet again April 27th. Here goes Torres, hit and run. And this will be way out of play. Not a bad call right there, a little hit and run action with Minchik and Torres. It's a good pitch to do it on, it's a down, down fastball. It's unable to put it in play. See go chart there with the stopwatch, timing everything up with these App State pitchers. Seeing what kind of jumps these NC State runners can get. Runner goes again, and Torres will have to put on the brakes. Minshik flying out for out number two. So after the infield single, a strikeout, and no problem there on the fly ball. Kornatzer doing a nice job working around that infield single. Terrell Tatum walked back in the second inning. That pitch just misses down low at the knees. That was a good spot. I wonder if you're going to see Torres take off again, try to get in the scoring position for Tatum. Said, who has the hot bat for NC State? in the last couple of games. Makes sense, too, because guy with Tatum's speed is a guy who led NC State in on-base percentage as a freshman. Yeah, if he gets thrown out here, it's another leadoff hitter. Right. On-base percentage this year is not quite as high as it was uh, that freshman season, but... Uh, He's a guy that has the tools to get on base, good eye at the plate, and then if he gets on, yeah, he could be your leadoff hitter. So, yeah, best case, you give Tatum a chance to come through like he did in the eighth inning on Sunday. Worst case, Torres gets thrown out. Tatum leads off the next inning. Wouldn't mind seeing him take off right here. Three one count. Probably gonna get a fastball. So at least he's gonna foul something off, get in play. There he goes. Yep. You there called it. it. Yeah, it's the perfect, you know, situation to run just for that right there. If he 
He gets a hold some, puts in the gap or down the lines. Obviously, he's scoring with him running. If not, we're back in the same situation. 3-2 count. He's going to take off anyway with two outs. And Torres can slow up because Tatum has drawn his second walk of the game. Well, that'll bring up Devontae Brown, and he followed up a Tatum walk back in the second inning with a home run to the deepest part of the ballpark. And that's the power he showed last year. It's the power we expected this year. Like we said, he's he's somewhat been struggling, but that that is what, you know, the potential he has. Such a good swing and the power that he provides for this NC State offense. If he get going, that's something that, you know, they are going to be very happy to see. Two on, two out. Fastball at the letter starts the sequence. Brown had five home runs. 22 hits last year. It's a hanging slider right there. I know he wants that one back. Yeah. That ball stayed up in the zone. Not too much depth on it. Yeah, we talked about this NC State lineup, and if Brown kind of gets his average up and starts being the hitter, you know, even in the same ballpark of the hitter he was last year to start the season, this lineup gets a whole lot better because he was one of the better hitters in the country. Yeah, it just gives another, you know, like we said, it, you expect it coming into this year, the lineup that they had, the guys coming back, you expect them to be very productive. And I, I think they've been productive throughout the, the year so far. They put up some good, some good numbers, but it's a matter of, figuring out the lineup that actually works for them, that, that flows, you know, one through nine. You got the power. You have the speed. Now it's just a matter of getting guys hot at the right time and, and seeing what works. And over the last couple weeks, you could see it starting to come together for Devontae Brown. And a home run to straightaway center fields. And if I'm... Cornats are here. I'm, I'm not really too concerned with Torres at second base. No, he's um, getting a heavy dose of sliders. I'm very concerned about Brown at the plate, though. Fastball up. That's a good job by Devontae Brown, just found things off, staying alive. You want to hit that mistake. You want to see if you get that slider back in the top of the part of the zone. And this time, you just can't miss it. Don't want to get beat on a fastball. Got to do everything in your power, just foul it off and stay alive in this type of situation. Put something in play. Breaking ball got him. So an infield single, a walk, but nothing doing for the Wolfpack against Kornatzer. We start the top of the fifth inning. It's 3-0 NC State. Here's how we got there. JT Jarrett leading things off with this double off the wall. Initially ruled out. It would be overturned upon a challenge. Tyler McDonough pushing a bunt to the right side. And Luca Tresh driving in a run on a ground out in the first. Then Devontae Brown using the big stick there for a two-run shot. That came in the second inning, and that's all the scoring to this point. Chris Villeman, and he's been good on the mound for NC State. Yeah, he's been dealing so far tonight for NC State already with see, one, two, three, four, five strikeouts on the night. Like you said early on in this game, he just gets better as the game goes on. He gets stronger. He starts hitting better spots. April will work better counts, better sequences. He works off that fastball. He start to mix in a little bit of a changeup. 
apart. Foul ball off to Tresh's face. And Tresh seems to be all right. Home plate umpire John Byrne is going to give him a second here. Yeah, right off the front of the mask. Shake you up a little bit, wake you up. See, that's why when you move from third base, you know, some guys will move to catcher. You were like, no, I'll, I'll take first base. <laughs> yeah. My body would have broke down if I went to catching <laughs> my <will>. senior year. <laughs> go, to, go to first base instead. Yeah, I'll give me the bigger mitt. Stretch every once in a while. Cole comes up empty. Save Trey Turner about probably five, ten errors that year. Digging digging balls out sure, of the air for Sure, sure you did. Yeah, yeah, yeah. The payoff to Cole. Nice play. Athlete out there on the mounds. Nice little short hop. That's what PFPs are for in practice. Right there, that play. Bounces off the mound. Get another good look at it right here. Could let that go to your, you know, all-American shortstop, but decides to take it himself. PFP, pitching PFP. field practice. Well, that pitch didn't miss by much. Hayden Cross takes it for ball one. Cross, like Cole before him, struck out back in the second. He struck out to end the second. High cheddar. Makes it a ball and a strike. And Villeman is just getting the ball back from Tresh, and, and he's ready to go. And, and that's the sign of a guy who's a competitor and is obviously feeling pretty good. Yeah, and that's uh, you love to see that from a pitcher, you know, whether you're a pitching coach, head coach. But I can tell you the infield and outfield, the fielders, they absolutely love that. Get on the mound, ready to throw the ball. You say it keeps you know it keeps everyone engaged. No one's waiting around. Throwing strikes. Just puts that fastball in on his hands. Yeah, heavy dose of fastballs in this inning so far. See if he breaks off one of those nasty sliders. But if you look, you know, a lot of times, especially in the last inning or two, as he started to to find his groove a bit, you know, he, he's waiting on the batter to get back in the box. And as soon as, you know, the batter, in this case, Cross gets back in, here he is with the pitch. Again, he jammed him. Well, double clutch from Torres. It's going to be an infield single. And I tell you what, Torres right there, I don't think he picked it cleanly. That's a ball, if you're the third baseman, you usually try to get there. I think Menchik uh, kind of hurt his shortstop's chances here. Yeah, it gets jammed on the play, so that ball's probably spinning a little bit. If Menchik, yeah, he just, that's one where he just needs to let Torres go. If it's hit any slower, then that's Menchik's ball 100%. But you got to let Torres just try to make a play. And you see right there, App State's first hit of the game comes here in the fifth with one out. Leishak, who flew out to right field, looks at ball one. And that's just a tough play. And, you know, talk about you moving from third base. You, you did play quite a bit of third base. So it, generally, you want to get to any ball that you can. But yeah, anything. That's, there's also a, a point where this ball's driven into right center field. Leishak's got extra bases. <laughs> All the way to the wall it goes. Throw's going to come into third, and he's got himself a triple. And just like that, App State is on the board. That ball's absolutely smoked. Fastball out over the middle of the plate. Shows that opposite field power. Get another good look at it right here. It stays behind it. Good barrel to baseball. Kind of, kind of misplays this out here off the wall. Yeah, he goes right through his legs. Finally gets it in. I don't think he would have had a shot at, at him anyway. And 
And so a meeting on the mound now. Clint Chrysler, NC State pitching coach. Trying to refocus Villeman here, and I'm, I'm sure the message has got to be, hey, look, you, you know, you pitched great. Just just get back to that. Don't 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 let that, uh, you know, the, the play in the infields and then, uh, you know, the one hard hit ball. Well, I shouldn't say the one because we saw the one from McGowan earlier. Yep. But for the most part, you know, he, he's having a nice outing. Yeah, you just got to get back to, you know, getting settled in. You say kind of forget about what just happened. Now your job is to keep him there at third base. It's going to start with that, hitting your spots, getting back in the zone, down the zone. He left a couple up right there. It's a good spot. That's a pitcher's pitch. A little late towards the NC State bullpen, and just like that, nothing in two against Terrell. They say he could be a game changer for them. And yes, he is a two-way player. And he's got all the tools. Villeman puts him away, three pitches. Well, if uh, Coach Chrysler wanted to refocus him, I think <laughs> uh, the message was received. But that's what he does. You know, he's able to work down in the zone, and then he's going to move north-south. You know, he's going to go north late in the, late in the counts. Like I say, he's not going to overpower you by any means. He, he just knows how to pitch. Works in, works out. Right there, good spot out on the black. That's exactly what he does. Peyton Idol. Now you see him get back into that quick, ready to go on the mound. Yeah. Six pitches to finish off the inning after the RBI triple by Layshock. Yeah, great spot right here by Chris Villman. Right on the black. That is a pitcher's pitch. App State on the board. We're halfway home. Back with Andrew Sinson. I'm Andrew Sanders. We start the bottom of the fifth. And it's three to one. NC State. And App State. And of course, Major Leagues just getting started. Three from the Wolfpack and Jeffrey Springs for the Mountaineers up at the big leagues. A couple of guys that you played with. Yeah, Trey Turner with a home run on tonight's game so far. Second at bat of the year. Kind of picking up where he left off last year. Carlos with a huge start for him last night. Just fighting injuries and, you know, finally getting back to 100% healthy. He looked good last night for the White Sox. Yeah. Yeah, good to see him back healthy. And well, Andrew Kisner backing up a legend. Legend. A legend uh, in St. Louis. But he's part of their, their long-term plans. Jeffrey Springs made a couple of appearances so far this year for the Rays. And again, a bullpen day for Appalachian State. So, see Shane Roberts. And look at his numbers on the year. So after the lefty, Martinez to start. Hall, Kornatzer, and now Roberts. Facing the top of the NC State order, Jarrett, McDonough, and Tresh. And App State able to scratch for the first time against Chris Villeman. An infield single, an RBI triple by the center fielder, Leishock. And it's got us to this 3-1 score line. Yeah, App State doing a perfect job tonight. Just like I said, staying in the game with their pitching and then obviously offensively last inning being able to chip away at that lead that's all you're trying to do is you're trying to stay within you know one or two possibly three runs throughout this whole entire ball game to give yourself a chance going into the latter half
just missed it on the outside part of the plate. Not a bad spot. JT Jared, one of the best eyes in this NC State offense. Just the baseball IQ that he comes from. It is through the roof. Just misses the outside corner. Two and one. Roberts making his first appearance for the Mountaineers since March 27th at Georgia Southern when he recorded one out. The ground is second. And from one second baseman to another, Drum Heller throws him out. Nice shot of staying down that ball. The ball is hit very hard over to him at second base. Just a great job staying down. Um, second baseman tend to pick their head up. Glove comes up with it, but not the case there. So we talk about the McDonough streak. 39 games he's reached. He's reached both times tonight. It's been a well-pitched game. Just four hits for the Wolfpack, two for the Mountaineers. Did McDonough get enough of this one? In the right center field and still carrying. He got all of it. McDonough hits home run number four this season. And there's the answer for NC State. Well, I guess that, that question, did he get enough of it? That's a, <laughs> that's a dumb question. Hey, no, I, I agree with you there. It's a change up down the zone. It's actually a pretty good pitch. But he just, he finds barrels. That's what he does. I couldn't see that ball up in the air. Time of, you know, kind of a, tough sky right now with the, the sun going down. But yes, to answer your question, he did get all that. It, it is kind of that time of night where it's easy to lose track of it. I did see it in the air. I mean, that ball was hit way up there. Uh, it, was a, it was a high trajectory ball. And so that, that's what made me question aloud, <laughs> you know, did he get enough? Because it, it sounded off the bat like he hit it pretty well. Yeah, no, I was, like I say, he just finds barrels. It doesn't matter where it's pitched. I mean, that, that ball is... You know, a changeup starting middle, middle, dropping off to the outer third. Just does a great job going down, getting it. Got some power behind that, you know, little frame. Of Ball and a strike here on Luca Tresh. Lays off the slider. But yeah, did he get enough? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, he did. Yeah, because that's... The wind is not doing a whole lot tonight, but the ball generally carries out to left center field here. Right center field, you don't see that many balls get out. No, it's always left field to left center. Probably the, you know, the 320 over there to the 370. Yeah. The the flags. Not busy today. Beautiful night for baseball. <laughs> yeah, 82 Doesn't get much and better. And now that the sun's gone down, getting a nice little breeze here. Uh, obviously, not in left center field as as Tresh will will draw his walk, but through the press box window, feel a little breeze coming in. Yeah, nothing's covered in green right now for us. That's just good. The pollen's staying away for now. I'll tell you what, my car is. It might, uh, yeah, I think my car has 90% of the pollen that's in Raleigh. So the McDonough solo shot and now a walk from Tresh gives Austin Murr an opportunity. 0 for 2 so far tonight.
Good spot right there. The slider has some depth on it. It's a pretty good pitch. He also has that good changeup that we saw to McDonough. Obviously, McDonough <laughs> turned that one over and put it out of the ballpark, but still a, a good depth uh, changeup. Sure, it makes him a little bit more hesitant to throw it right now to a hot hitting Murr. He skies this one on the right side. Two away. So Murr, an uncharacteristic 0 for 3. So Torres looks to extend the inning. This has already been a big inning for NC State. Just that one swing from McDonough to answer back App State's top of the fifth score. Cole with plenty of room to play this one. And Torres is retired, but Tyler McDonough. Yeah, gets a change up down the zone. Big fly out here to right field at Doak Field to put the NC State up to 4 1. Chris Villam in the second year freshman, following up the strongest of starts a, a week ago in which he had a complete game, one hit shutout against the UNCG Spartans going up against another North Carolina program in App State. Nine strikeouts last week. He's already got seven through five innings, Andrew. Yeah, it's a lot on fastballs, too. You see him going, working both sides of the plate, up and down, changing eye levels. He, he is able to um, really just keep these App State hitters off balance with that fastball tonight. And you look at the K count. And only one of them looking. So, I mean, he is generating swings and misses. And what was it, an inning ago, we showed you that graphic of uh, NC State players or players from these two programs. Can't forget about Jeffrey Springs, but players in the big leagues. I'm thinking of an NC State player, you know, Chris Villeman from the left side, wearing number 16, getting a lot of strikeouts, throwing complete games, kind of reminiscent of of that guy Rodon up in Chicago. Yeah, I mean, just throws probably, I would say, you know, six to eight miles per hour, a little bit slower, but just, like I said, knows how to work the zone, knows how to pitch. I think that's what he's really gained coming into this year. He just, he learned how to pitch. I think he dove into that. And it is paying off for him. Well, when you have three, when you have feel for three pitches and command of three pitches. That's the biggest thing. And he could throw them in any count, too. So, yeah. You know, when you could throw all three for strikes, like you said, it's for a hitter, you know, which one do you eliminate? Which one do you look for? What's your approach? How about this? Two pitches and two outs here in the sixth. And both just weak contact. One got to Villeman. That one didn't even quite. Tresh says, I'll yeah, take it myself. That's a nice play by Tresh, too. Said he's been the mainstay behind the dish for NC State, not getting many nights off. Looking good back there behind the plate defensively. So now, if you're Villeman, do you just throw one right down the heart to McGowan? Say that there's no way you're going to swing the bat here? Uh, he did, but I would not. <laughs> With the way McGowan's been swinging the bat, you know, back in the first inning, line out to the left field. Well, he does take, and it was called a ball. That's that changeup. That's what I was thinking he would come out with. But, yeah, I mean, that's a good call by you. Just, you know, you figure you're going to get a take right there after two quick outs. I mean, that's the rule, right? You can't have a three-pitch inning. No, you, you if you're, can't. If you're that third guy, your, your hands are kind of tied. But you're also... Yeah, I mean, you have to be aggressive in fastball, you know, situations. So if you know you're going to get one, 
I was always the type of guy who go ahead and let it loose, but you can't miss it. Not a bad spot right there on the outside part of the plate. But again, that's what Villeman does. If he misses, yeah. I mean, he's he's in the he's in the neighborhood. His small misses, not not more than a you know two balls off the plate. Small misses. That's what pitchers need to do. Minimize your misses and make them small. Aim small, miss small. That's right. That's what they say in the Patriot. That's what a great move. That, but yeah, that's exactly what they need to do. Those are some of the best pitchers that you'll see, especially you know guys in the big leagues. Scherzer out there, Degrom. All those guys, they're very small misses off the dish. Well, this is exactly the kind of at bat that App State needed from McGowan. After a couple of weak comebackers with the first two pitches of the inning. See, Battle in here. Yeah, see if he climbs the ladder right here. He's gone kind of north on his last couple of fastballs. Goes down his own. Tough play. Not going to get him at first. It's another infield hit. And see, that's one McGowan was due from earlier. We said yeah, he, he's yeah. been having a tough day. He's actually been playing a lot better than his, his stat line would tell you. And uh, he'll get the infield single here and the reward for battling in this at bat because it's not a ball. You hit hard. No, that's a baseball god rewarding him for a, a pretty solid night so far. That's a fantastic at bat. Nice job extending the inning for App State. Exactly what you want to do. See see what happens now. Runner goes. Tresh with a good throw safe at second base. McGowan just does get in under the tag with his fourth stolen bag of the year. It's another first move. That's a perfect read. As soon as he lifts that leg, you'll see him take off. Fresh with a perfect throw, too. Just unable to get him. Yeah, not a whole lot the catcher could do there. I think uh, I think he did it perfectly. So we saw just a couple of innings ago, Tatum extended an inning. And then Devontae Brown followed it up with a home run. App State trying to get something done here with two, with two away. The senior, Robbie Young. This would be a huge two-out RBI if he can get it through. Cut this lead in half. Young finding a home in Boone. After starting his college career back in 2016 at Maryville, played at Garden City Junior College. Since he joined the Mountaineers back in 2019, he has been pretty much the everyday starter at first base and a big bat right in the middle of the order. And he gets quite a bit of this one. Opposite field power into the corner. It goes foul ball. Ball struck well, and it just kept tailing. And yeah, not much real estate over there in left field going towards the bullpen. Saw Johnny Butler take a slide out there into the stay away from the wall. The big 2-2 pitch for, for Villeman. He just does stay alive there. Like I said, App State's looking really good offensively tonight. They've, they've battled in some tough at-bats. Obviously, you know, seven strikeouts on the night. But I've been impressed with the, just the approaches that they've had. They, yeah. they get into some deep counts. They're aggressive when they need to be. 
Especially a team coming off a break. Yeah, it's just, hadn't played in a week. Yeah, it's, it's, they've they've looked good tonight. Should in the inning. Torres kind of out there in no man's land. He took charge, took control of the situation. And Chris Villeman is through six. Four to one, NC State leading off the sixth inning here. It's going to be Johnny Butler, and the Wolfpack has done a good job batting leadoff so far today. Yeah, three for five on the night. That's exactly what you're looking for. In a midweek game, weekend game, no matter when you're playing, that's exactly what you want out of your leadoff guys. Technically, two for five, but a leadoff walk in the third still. 60% of the time, they're getting the leadoff man on base every time. All the time. <laughs> <laughs> I knew where you are going with that. I'm just glad I could get that reference in. <laughs> New man on the mound, Jariah Henry for Appalachian State. You see, just two and two-thirds innings. Again, the, the sample size is so small. You don't really pay attention to an ERA uh, in, in that in that small of a sample size. And, and this is a really good opportunity for a guy that you haven't been able to get that much work yet uh, in this season to throw an inning or so and, and maybe go out there, have a good performance, gain a little confidence, and maybe earn a few more innings. Yeah, big time live arm you'll see from Henry. Now it's just a matter of, you know, honing in the, the locations and, and being able to hit spots, but He's got a live arm. See Butler over two. Struck out against Kornetzer. Johnny Butler, one of the leaders on this team. When you have a bunch of guys come back, obviously there's a little more leadership than usual, but. They say he is the leader amongst a lot of veteran players for this ball club. And that's what you need, you know, especially this year that NC State's having. Get down early. You face probably the three toughest teams in the ACC. I mean, it, you get one and eight in the ACC. You need to lean on those guys that have been there, played in you know different situations, have gone through the you know the losses and and really know how to deal with them. Said Butler is that guy that they've kind of looked at and and looked for the the kind of positive vibes to come out of that locker room. Good fastball from Henry, makes it two and two. Butler takes the breaking ball, drills it to first, where Young takes care of it for the first out. Yeah, Henry gets away with a hanging slider right there. Butler puts a great swing on it just right at the, the glove of Young over at first base, able to gobble it up. Now we'll have the shift on men's sheet. Elliot Avent looking on. One of the best. Going for his 900th victory tonight. And that's just with NC State. With NC State. 
Yeah, over 1,100 for his career. So one of the best when it comes to, you know, winning games, which is obviously important. But one of the best also if you're just looking for a, a conversation and, 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 a, and a laugh. I mean, just a, a great guy to be around. His players absolutely love him. And he loves his players. And Sheik able to find a little spot in the zone right there. A little Bermuda Triangle out there. Gets off the end of the bat. Able to fall for Sheik. But yeah, going back to, you know, Coach Avon, you can sit there and talk to that man for, for hours on end and laugh. He just loves, like you said, loves his players. He just loves NC State. That's yep. he's a guy who grew up liking NC State. Obviously moves out to New Mexico, coaches New Mexico State for a little bit, and then able to come back home and been here for the last 25 years. Yeah, dream job for him. And he has done a great job, obviously, carrying on the tradition. And I know that's special for him because he has uh, such great regard. You know, he'll, he'll mention uh, Coach Esposito and Coach Tanner. Um, and so he just wanted to kind of take, take over the program and, and, yeah. and basically do it justice um, because you know, he has great reverence for what they, they accomplished and, and built as a program. And, and he has done... He has done a really great job over 25 years. Yeah, in my four years here at NC State, you know, it was always there was I don't think there was ever a day that we practiced or played that, you know, Coach Esposito's name was not brought up really? in some fashion or the other. You know, he always talked about him. Obviously, he was here with Coach V as well. So talking about Coach V and, and the experiences he had with them. seen some stuff here at NC State that that many coaches have not seen and and gotten to experience so it was cool coming you know coming down from New Jersey and then being able to kind of fall in love with a school because of your head coach you know some guys will come in just play your four years or three years and get out and not really care about the school but it's hard hard not to fall in love with the school when your head coach is just so in love with it and and cares about every aspect of the school and, and the sports programs. Close 3-0 pitch. It'll keep Tatum in the batter's box. Tatum with that big hit in the eighth inning on Sunday. As the runner goes, and here Tatum will draw his walk. And he had gotten it a two-strike count. And Coach Avent, you know, speaking of, conversation. you know, actually, actually called the conference, which I haven't seen him do as much this year as maybe in in previous seasons. I was gonna say he used to love to do that, and some guys hate it. Some guys just want to stay. You know, they're so locked in, and, and they don't really want to hear outside you know noise or conversation but coach haven he's always a fan to, to call him over and you know no. give him that put your arm on his shoulder and he'll talk your ear off like you said he's oh, i didn't he, say that you said that i did i will say <laughs> i tried to put it back on you but no nah, I, I mean man of great advice right there it worked out for tatum yeah, it's understandable how some guys, you know, would want to just, just, just focus. Yep. Uh, but a lot of times that can that can calm you down it and does. just kind of re reset things for you, make you realize, hey, you know, just deep breath. It also makes you think about you not having two strikes in a big situation. Yeah, it just too. <laughs> slows it slows things down. A Changes bit. the tempo. And uh, just miss fastball. Yeah, obviously, Tatum was able to come up huge in that spot in a pretty close to a must must win game for nc state already dropping two to clemson they were kind of on the verge of sunday in a tight ball game but that was a massive spot for terrell tatum uh, he's been aboard three times today three walks so we were talking about that on base percentage and him uh 
you know, potentially being a, a leadoff hitter candidate. And I think that role on this team is, is still kind of up in the air, especially with Austin Murray starting to hit for more power. Yeah, they definitely have some interchangeable parts that they can move around. And I think the cool thing about, you know, just watching NC State teams, it's not your prototypical, hey, this is your one guy, this is your two guy, this is your three, your cleanup, you know, your nine hole. It doesn't matter where you are in the lineup. I, I just think that they are able to, you know, you can move Terrell Tatum to a four hole. You could have him in the nine hole. You could have him in the one hole. It just doesn't matter. You don't have your prototypical, you know, lineups that you would normally see in a team. Yeah. Well, earlier we were talking, uh, you made a reference to how late the, the national championship game was. Yep. So that's something we've seen over the course of time is basketball is starting to be a little more positionless. Yeah. There are more more guys. It's not, you know, this guy is, is the point guard and this is the center. Correct. It's kind of, hey, everybody's tall. Everybody can, can, <laughs> can athletic, dribble, shoot, play, yeah. you know, pass, do a little bit of everything. Uh, do you think baseball is, is starting to head a little bit more that way where it's not, it's not just, you know, it's guys. I think we're seeing guys maybe being able to play more than one position, obviously, but also in, a, in an order where you say, look, Everybody in this lineup can hit for power, average, yep. speed. Yeah, I think now with analytics and just how kind of technology is evolving, you know, guys that are in the weight room, they're getting stronger. You know, that's where the power comes into play. So, you know, a JT Jarrett who came in at probably, I'll say, 150 pounds is now obviously four years into it, five years into it, he's gotten a lot stronger. He can be, you know, in that six hole, in the five hole, wherever it is. I, I don't think... I don't think you, like you said, you don't see the normal, hey, this is my, my leadoff hitter. This is my, you know, two-hole hitter. Anyone can move around and hit wherever you need to, whatever flows for you offensively. Big 3-2 pitch here for Henry against Devontae Brown. Runners take off, but they can slow up. Bases loaded. A single from Menchik. They just found a... Well, green grass out there in left field, and then back-to-back -back walks loads the bases for JT Jarrett, and so this is uh, going to be the leadoff hitter. And like we said, you know, Murr was in that spot. Jarrett's been there some. Voita Menchik has been there some. Johnny Butler was the leadoff hitter a couple of years ago for NC State. And we'll see. So far, App State is. Uh, Don Martinez for an inning, Hall for two, Cornatzer for one, Roberts for one, and I'm sure would like to get Henry through this inning. As you said, talented guy. Yeah. But you know, free free passes obviously will get you into some trouble, and that's that's been the issue here because you look at the hit from Menchik. It, that's not it's not a ball that was hit hard. No, um, not at but, all. But it's just been not throwing enough strikes for Henry here. And that's the thing. It's you know. Once you get a little bit wild and kind of the floodgates opened and now you're in a situation where you need to get some outs. Got a couple guys warming up in the bullpen for App State. But right now, this is his situation to deal with. Stenson Malden in the bullpen. Base is loaded, one out for Jarrett. Minshik on third base. It's the most recent NC State Grand Slam. Just a week and a half ago. Big one to set the tone on Friday night against Carolina too. Big sweeping slider. That's a big breaking ball right there. You see JT Jarrett jump out of the way. Not expecting that one. Come on, come on. 
Can't get him to chase. There are ducks on the pond. That's why you hear the duck call. You know, I've never heard that until I came down to NC State. The duck call or just the saying ducks on the pond? I think the saying ducks on the pond. Oh. Well, I know it's weird. Maybe it's a southern thing. I mean, I grew up with it. I played baseball my whole life and I've... I think it was like one of my first yeah. games down here. They, they <laughs> sounded the ducks. I was like, is this something I don't know about? <laughs> or what's going on here? I would assume that's a you know, fairly normal saying in baseball, too. Two and two here on Jarrett. Hard hit, base hit. Slaps it down the first baseline. Jarrett's headed for second. A couple of runs will come across. Throw back down into third, and it gets in the left. And now another throw down into third. Ooh, Devontae Brown wasn't He's sure. Head spinning over there at third base. Not sure where to go, what to do. I think that ball caught him in the back, or at least the back of the head on that throw. Great job by JT Jarrett. Not doing too much. It's a fastball up in the zone. Slides it past Young down the right field line. You see right here, Tatum scoring easily. Then right here, I think the ball hits off of, yeah, hits right off of, of Brown's head. <laughs> he wasn't Not sure. Not sure. Let's By the time back. he picked up Coach Hart, Coach Hart's actually hold on. Yeah, let's hold off a second right now. <laughs> so a wild play. And this is going to bring out a conference. That's going to be it for Henry. So a two RBI double for JT Jarrett makes it six to one NC State. Evan Malden going to come in and pitch for the Mountaineers when we come back. Another App State pitcher, Evan Malden, making his third appearance of the season. First App State hurler to not get a clean inning here as he enters with one out. And runners on second and third. So more ducks on the pond for the Wolfpack. There you go. And Duck Hall was actually kind of paying some homage to a longtime booster of NC State, John Ward after the only white seat at Doak Field, Dale Park. Well, McDonough in his last at bat did this. That solo shot made it four to one for McDonough. He takes down and in. Infield in for App State, by the way. Yeah, you're, right now you're trying to salvage any any runs, keep this game somewhat close. Like I said, trying to give yourself a chance going into the you know latter part of this game, the seven, eight, nine innings. Line drive in a left. This is gonna score Brown. And Jarrett will get the stop sign at third, but McDonough comes through. Third hit tonight, and his second run driven in. Once again, it's a ball up in the zone, and he finds another barrel. Cannot not talk enough about this guy finding barrels. The big thing with him, he doesn't try to do too much. He just keeps it simple, short bat swing. What a player that NC State has in Tyler McDonough. There's the white 
C for Mr. Ward, who is known for the duck call here. And he used to carry a duck call. And, and, right. And whatever that's you want to call it. And that's why they, they play that here at the Doak. But you had never heard of <laughs> just I, the saying ducks I'm, on the pond anyways. I guess I have. I don't know. There's no telling. So you made me look that up because, I mean, I'm from North Carolina. You're from New Jersey. Okay. I thought, okay, maybe is it just a North Carolina thing? I mean. What do you got? What kind of information you have on ducks on the pond? I got something for you right Ooh. after this 0-1 pitch. Oh, throw over to first. That gives me opportunity. So, according to the Internet. Everything's true on the Internet. The term is thought to have been first used by Arch McDonald, who is a broadcaster for the Washington Senators from 1934 to 1956. So he is thought to have been the originator. Interesting. So maybe I just... Formerly the Senators... Nationals. Now the Nationals? Maybe I just never heard it. Well, is there a lot of duck hunting in New Jersey? It's a great question. That's something Outside I... Outside of, you know, NES <laughs> with the with the Mario. Oh, what a great game. And, that and was, duck hunt uh, combination. The old orange gun, orange and gray gun. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure. I, I couldn't tell you. Up high, ball three. Trash has RBI today. Also drawn a walk, looking for his first hit. McDonough takes off. That might get him out of the double play. In fact, they won't get any outs here. Ball was hit really hard and eats up Welch. And it will score Jarrett from third base. Yeah, he ran himself into that little short hop. If you're Welch, you got to stay back on this. Know your runner. You see him taking off. He just runs himself right into that. You know, you have Tresh at the dish, so he doesn't run extremely well. You can get that on the long hop and make that play and get an out for your pitcher. Well, when you're hitting 500 with runners in scoring position, it's going to make it a pretty good night for your offense, especially when you get eight opportunities. Yeah. Yeah, and that's where they, you know, struggled early on in ACC play. They weren't getting the big hits. They weren't getting, you know, they get guys on base, and then all of a sudden, you know, at the end of the game, you're you're two for 15 with with, with runners on. So now they're starting to find barrels, get the big hits. Starting to see a lot more crooked numbers getting put up by NC State. Four across already here in the bottom of the six, looking for more. By the way, they did rule that a hit for Tresh, so an RBI single for Tresh. Three straight hits in the inning for the Wolfpack, and now another walk, and here comes batter number nine of the inning, Jose Torres. So four hits in the inning, now three walks. It's really hard to have an inning where you score four, four plus runs without a few walks. Yeah, I agree. You need you need some type of help. Obviously, if you don't have four walks and 
everyone's hitting and hitting yeah. it's contagious anyway, so you'll and, see that every once in a while. But And that's where, you know, App State was able to keep NC State close in this game because you didn't see uh, too many walks. But you start giving up some free bases. Next thing you know, an RBI with runners in scoring position, a couple ducks on the pond, and uh, it can be a big inning quickly. Like we said, App State's done a great job of, of staying in this game, obviously up until this point, but I thought their pitchers, you know, early on looked very good against, you know, a pretty high-powered NC State offense. Yeah, yeah. Especially for, sure. for having a week off, 10 days off, whatever it was. Yeah, I think we've seen that across numerous sports. Teams that have, have had a break, it's just tough. It, you, you know, it's... You get into a certain flow, a certain rhythm. There's a reason why it's called, you know, mid-season four. Yeah, exactly. You know, because you get into that. And then even if even if your team is not dealing with – it's even obviously worse if you miss practice and people mm -hmm. being held out. And that's that's much worse. But just if, if you just miss games on the schedule. Torres finds a spot. He'll drive in a couple. Jose Torres with his second hit tonight, and that makes it 10 to 1. That's a great job with two strikes, just putting the ball in play, finding holes out in front. Tries to get his barrel on it, just gets out in front. Easily scoring McDonough. And then Luca Tresh right there to make it 10 1 for the Wolfpack. So this inning started, if you'll remember. Johnny Butler, you said that Henry probably got away with a hanging slider. He hit it hard. He hit it right at the first baseman, Robbie Young. And now here he is again. Now that was a long time ago. <laughs> well, a lot's happened since then. <laughs> single, walk, walk, double, single, single, walk, single. Pitching change in the middle there. That was six runs ago. Yeah, I honestly forgot that that started off this inning. Six runs in the six so far. Big swing by Johnny Butler right there. Little added pressure on Butler here because he doesn't want to make two outs in the same inning. He will not. He joins the hit parade. This will go all the way to the wall. Murr comes across, Torres into third, and Johnny Butler has himself a one-out double. Once again, it's an outside fastball. He just doesn't try to do too much. The same as the almost the same exact pitch that McDonough had. They just do a great job just, you know, focusing in. I think that's where they've really made adjustments. It is paying off for them. 11-1 now. Make another pitching change here from App State. Seven runs in the inning for NC State. And still just one out. Andrew Terrell in the pitch when we come back.
NC State fans having a good time here in Raleigh, and why not? The home team, seven runs across in the bottom of the sixth. Andrew Terrell is in to pitch. The John Olerud two-way player of the week back on March 9th. Of course, maybe some of our younger viewers don't remember John Olerud. And for those that do remember John Olerud, you think of him as uh, as not being a pitcher. You think of him, I think of him with the Mariners. I think of him as the first baseman. Yeah, first baseman. Yeah, wearing the helmet. But... Uh, he was actually quite a two-way player in college. And so, uh, you know, two-way player of the year. Named the John Olerud Award. The John Olerud Player of the Week. So Terrell is in the pitch. John Olerud from the Conference of Champions, of course. You know he was named the Pac-12 Player of the Century. I didn't know that was an award that they gave out. Did they make that up for him? <laughs> you said, you know I've what? never. <laughs> You're the Player of the Century. Washington State. Yep. Washington State Player of the Century. Now, do you think we've seen kind of the Johnny Bench Award get changed to the Buster Posey Award? Yeah, which I like, by the way. Yeah, I like that. Does the John Olrood Award get changed to the Otani Award? <laughs> Two-way guy for well, the I, Angels. I think it works. I think it works great because it's a college baseball award. I've called uh, a lot of games yeah, in my day with like with uh, former editor of Baseball America, John Manuel. Yes, and he would always say, "Yeah, you know, John." Yep. He would always say, um, you, know, you know, Johnny Bench is a great catcher, but he wasn't a college catcher. Yeah. So why is the college yeah. award named for Johnny Bench? And no, you know, I'm yeah, like, I, I don't know. I, don't, I, I can't argue with you that's there, That's great, John. yeah. Um, and so I thought he had a great point. So, yeah, Otani is out here, you know, throwing 100-mile-an-hour fastballs and hitting 450-foot home runs. It's, and un, it, it's unbelievable. Great fun to watch. But college baseball. But, I respect that. But John Olerud. We're talking about the Pac-12 player of the century here, Andrew. <laughs> uh, by the way, the Pac-12 also named the pitcher of the century. It's a guy you, you would know, or know of, I should say, is Voitamin Sheik will find himself extra bases here. Torres and Butler come across to score. And it's back-to-back -back doubles for the Wolfpack. Mark Pryor, mm. pitcher of the century in the Pac-12. What do you think about Minshik's swing here? Yeah, it's a really good swing. It's another inside pitch that he's just able. He has quick hands that he's able to get his barrel to on the inside part of the plate. He just sneaks it in inside the third baseline there for the slide in double. Did Mark Pryor go to Southern Cal? Good question. Or am I making that you're up? Put me on the spot. Let's find out. Yes, you're right. I don't know how I did that. Terrell Tatum on base all three times today. Couple runs scored. He's walked three times. Ball is tailing foul at the distance. Yeah, Mark Pryor, Kerry Wood. Looked like the Cubs were going to be set for, for quite a while God, there. Kerry Wood, he was a very good Cubby. Terrell drops in that breaking ball for strike two. 
since we're talking Major League Baseball. I'm sure you saw the grand slam that your guy Giancarlo hit. That it was, was 470. Yeah, I believe it was 471. That's one of the furthest balls I've ever seen hit at Yankee Stadium. Yeah. And off of a guy who pitched here in the Carolinas. Who did, who did he hit ball. off? I just saw the swing. I didn't notice who was pitching. Sean Armstrong, ECU guy. Okay. Yeah, 470. You ever hit one that far with one of those metal bats? <laughs> no. No? Even with the boom boom bats. With the boom boom stick? No, I never got, never got one. We also didn't have the technology to track how far our home runs True, went. true. But... No, I did not. <laughs> Tatum goes down on strikes. You can confidently say. I can confidently say no. Nice change up right there, Tatum. Yeah, those, I mean, watching Stanton and Judge hit. Obviously, all power. You don't see those guys hit, you know, for average that often. But it is impressive. I was able to go up and watch Trey Turner play a couple years ago when Bryce Harper was still with the Nationals, and watching him take BP. I mean, all I mean, all all big leaguers watching, you know, just to, just how they go about their business. But you know, I think he had like a home run round. And he just put on a show. Yeah. Well, there's a guy that was uh, that was known to that was part of the lore of Bryce Harper. Yep. Uh, in high school, and then obviously in JUCO was that, you know, hey, this guy, this guy. I remember reading, I believe it was a Sports Illustrated article about it. And it's when he was on the cover. They think that he hit, you know, a 500 plus foot home <laughs> run, and there was one he put to the back wall at the Trop yeah, in Tampa, yeah, yeah. and. Uh, it, like somebody somebody measured where the ball finished up and it was 500 and something feet out there in the desert one day and so he was kind of it was some kind of Paul Bunyan tall tale type stuff but that's what makes it fun is it could have been you know it could be true yeah. just like you said earlier I don't, I, the socks do they help me they might they might like you never did he know. hit the ball that far good yeah <laughs> good maybe <laughs> who knows maybe but yeah I mean he really made a name for himself which ended up making him a lot of money. 10-year contract with the Phillies. Yeah, baseball has some lucrative contracts. To say, yes. Ball and two strikes here on Devontae Brown. Back-to-back -back strikeouts finish off the inning, but NC State puts up nine in the sixth. Andrew. Yeah, big time inning right there for NC State. Hits all around, a couple doubles. Nice job by NC State to break this inning open and get break this game open. 13-1 NC State. Kobe Ingle is on the pitch for NC State. The freshman making his fourth college appearance. Just a little bit over the weekend against Clemson and enters in a 13 to 1 ball game. Another strong start for Chris Villeman. 96 pitches. And just the the one ball by Layshock, the triple in the fifth doing the damage, but just a really strong midweek start for him. He, he seems to really have, have figured some things out. Yeah, like I said, we, you know, we talked about it the whole time. He, he's learned how to pitch, I believe. Um, just really able to locate fastball, and that's been the biggest thing for him. He throws strikes, pitches to contact, and his last two starts have been phenomenal for NC State. Really talented left-hander, Villeman. So his last two starts, 15 innings, four hits, one run, five walks, 16 strikeouts. Hmm. That's going to get you two Ws. 
I mean, that's strong weekend numbers. Yeah. If you're getting that out of your midweek guy. It's also, you know, he started as the Sunday guy for NC sure. State. So I'm sure. sure there's a little chip on the shoulder to, you know, hey, I deserve a spot back in there. But, you know, with Wilson pitching so well, the hard hit ball right at McDonough. But with Highfield pitching well, you got, you know, Wilson on Sundays pitching well. Now him and Evan Justice move into a, you know, a pretty big bullpen role that they've struggled with early on the season. So Engel gets Cole. It's a line out to McDonough in center field. And here comes Hayden Cross. He got the first hit of the game for the Mountaineers. An infield single. This one will get out of the infields. He's two for three today, Hayden Cross. Yeah, big time right there. Just aggressive early on the count. Gets a fastball. Able to drive it out the right field. And here comes Leshock. Leshock, a starter every year at App State, except for last year, he made just four starts. He looks to lay down that bunt, takes it for a strike. Made an impact as a freshman, 254 batting average, led the team. Back in 2018, he's back as the everyday center fielder and got the average up there. Showed off the power, stroking a triple to right center field. He's quickly behind nothing and two. But with that big freshman year, he was awarded uh, the title King of the Rock at the end of the year awards banquet. And at App State, they named their end of the year awards. I like this. The Appspies. <laughs> like the Espies, get it? But it's the Appspies. I'm clapping right now uh, that's for a, them. That's a good name. That is. That's a that is a good name. That's better than what NC State has, the Wolfies. The Woofies. Nothing in two here on Layshock. And Engel strikes him out. Breaking ball does the job. Yeah, it's a really good slider right here by Engel. He has natural movement off of his fastball anyway, and then that's a good slider. Starts middle-middle, breaking outside the zone. This is a guy that NC State really likes coming out of the bullpen. Obviously hasn't had that many chances in the last couple, you know, week and a half, but... The guy, I think that they're going to start to rely on a little bit more. See some good depth on that slider right there. So it is pitcher versus pitcher here. It's Terrell it is the pitcher of record right now. Got the last couple outs of the sixth, and who knows, we might see him pitch the seventh. Walk and a strikeout today for Terrell. Good shot by Tresh right there. Said he's kind of been the main save for NC State behind the dish. Continues to work. A couple foul balls off the face mask tonight. 13-1 game, keeping everything in front of him. Hit pretty well in the right center. Brown. Runs it down. Devontae Brown having a great night at the ballpark. A home run earlier back in the second and a nice defensive play to end the seventh. Time to stretch in Raleigh. Thirteen to one the score here at the stretch along with Andrew Sensen. My name is Andrew Sanders. NC State opening this game up with a nine-run sixth inning. It was a really well-pitched game through the first five and a half innings. 
Terrell able to come in and put out the fire for the Mountaineers in that sixth inning as he struck out Tatum and Brown to finish off the inning. And so he will see the top of the order here in the bottom of the seventh. But App State, glad to be back on the baseball diamond. They've gotten off to a nice start in Sunbelt play. Four and two, swept Arkansas State, lost two of three to Georgia Southern most recently, but still. Uh, to, to get off to a nice four and two start in, in Sunbelt play, this is a team that was, that was picked to be at the very bottom of the East Division. Which really surprises me, to be honest. I know... You talk about a veteran team and, and the response to that is, well, everybody is, is, is a veteran team this year. Sure. You get a look at the, the East Division there. And look, everybody knows about Coastal Carolina, of course, uh, South Alabama. There's some good teams in the Sun Belt. Don't get me wrong. Yeah, it's a good but baseball it's, it's, conference. It's a good baseball conference as, as Jarrett will lead off the bottom of the seventh with a walk. But when you're talking about a team that – you know, Coach Smith returns eight starting position players, your entire weekend rotation, and it's a team that won nine of ten to close out the year in 2020 before the season was canceled. This is a team that beat a ranked Wake Forest team in a midweek last year. I don't care if everybody else is also a veteran team. That just sounds to me like a team that was playing some really good baseball down yep. the stretch. And, and if the season hadn't been cut short, I think probably would have gone on to have a very nice season in the Sun Belt. I was going to say, yeah, I think it's, you know, they're kind of the unfortunate, you know, can canceled season, obviously. But you get a ton of guys back. And I think right now they're playing good baseball. They're 4-2 and two in, in the Sun Belt. But they also, one of the hardest schedules that I've seen in a long time, they... A three-game set at ECU. Yep, got swept there. Got to go to UNCW. Got, another very got swept good there. Yep, and then you have your midweek game at Charlotte. Another good team. Go to Wake Forest. Then obviously the Coastal series postponed, and then you come to NC State. So they they pack their schedule full. They got Wake Forest again next week. Charlotte yeah. again. They've got Miami later yeah. this year for a series. Yep. So, well, all credit to Coach Smith and the Mountaineers. I and part of it helps that it. Too. Part of it helps that there's just good teams in North Carolina. Yep, but exactly. but they're trying to schedule the best teams in, in North Carolina. I, I love that. I, I think it just makes your team so much better. It doesn't matter if you're in you know a 13-1 ball game like this, or you know you go to East Carolina and you get swept. It's the learning experience. It's you, you figure out as a team who you are and, and what you can do and, and what kind of teams you kind of hang around with. So when they, they go those games and you know go down to Miami later on in the year, I think that's a huge learning curve for a team you know, like App State with a couple older guys and you, know, you also have some young talent on the team as well. Brought in. Ten newcomers in total, six freshmen, four transfers. Yeah, I get that, that a lot of programs brought back more players uh, than they would have expected, of course. I mean, there's only five rounds of the draft. Yep. It just, yeah, some teams lost some very key players, but for the most part. You're, you're going to get a lot back. You're not I, I, doing ACC games all year. I haven't seen a team really have more than... Two or three drafted as Trash tattoos this one in the left. And there's McGowan for out number two. I mean, if you have three guys drafted in the first five rounds, that's a big year for even top top level teams. It's a lot of talent. It's a lot of talent. Yeah, I totally agree. And we, you know, you and I have talked about it before as well. Just college baseball as a whole, the, the depth of talent that's in the country right now, it's it's, college baseball is at a very, very high place for the next couple of years yep. due to that you know, COVID season. I think it's just getting better and better. Uh, we were talking on Sunday about players choosing. This ball's driven into left. McGowan looking up off the very top of the wall. 
Austin Murr goes opposite fields for a two-out double. Once again, McGowan plays that ball perfectly off the wall out there in left field. Almost the same exact play they had with JT Jarrett back in the first inning. Murr thinks he gets all of it. Yeah, quick little jog, and then he starts to figure it out. I get on second base. Bare hands. Throws a little bit offline. Yeah. Get a pinch runner out there. Giles in for Murr. D'Angelo Giles to pinch run. So Murr, another extra base hit. Again, last six games, he had seven extra base hits. He's got a double and a walk in this one. And now Jose Torres, who has two of the 13 hits for NC State. Yeah, you're talking about more and more players on opening day roster from four-year universities. Yeah. Guys are realizing it. Jose Torres is a prime example. He's a guy that absolutely uh, could have gone pro out of high school, talked it over with his family. He said it was a lot of, lot of long discussions, a lot of, lot of late nights you know, discussing, discussing options because it's a great position to be in, but it's a tough decision. It is. You're once, turning down a lot of money. Yeah, I was going to say once money starts getting involved and, and you know, big-time money, that's, that's where things get pretty serious. But It's about uh, what's best for your future. Yeah, I just the college experience I had, and I know other guys who have turned down big money, and that, you know, the college experience that they've had, it's hard to... It's hard to describe, but it's hard to, you know, turn down as well. Money, yeah, it's going to get your bank bankroll getting, you know, filled a little bit quicker than what you expect. But, you know, I think the experiences that you get to have in college with some, you know, teammates that you'll have lifelong friends, uh, I, I think that goes a long way. Yeah. And I think more, more and more guys are realizing, you know, major league teams aren't holding it against you to go to college. You can develop yeah. in college as Torres strikes out, that'll end the inning. But uh, you can have a good college career, get that experience, get that education, and then still have a shot, uh, you know, to, to play in the big leagues. Through seven, it's 13 to one, NC State. It's 13 to one, NC State here in the top of the eighth inning. And we have got ourselves a college debut. Garrett Payne, the freshman from Charlottesville is on the mound. A big-time recruit for NC State, making his college debut. He's a fastball, curveball, change-up, three-pitch mix guy. Excited to see him make his college debut. Big right-hander, as you can see, six foot seven, from the Miller School of Albemarle. First college pitch for the big right-hander is a strike. It's also a good sign for NC State. It's to, starting to see some more guys come out of the bullpen, you know, starting to get a little bit more healthy. He has a nice little two-seam action on that fastball. I think it's you're starting to you know, get your team back to 100%. That's exactly what they want going into the middle part of the season. Of course, last year was canceled, but Payne at the Miller School. Big-time recruit. And... He sits down, Peyton Idle. Yeah, good sequences right here. Two seams and then comes back up into the grill with the fastball on Idle. Unable to catch up to that one. But season was canceled. Freshman through junior year, Payne won three state titles. And he was as a high school junior, the starting pitcher in the state title game. Do you know who his coach was at the Miller School of Albemarle? Again, this is, this is three time in a row state champion. This is a big time program in Virginia. I know, I'm putting you on the spot. You are, I'm trying, uh, to, I'm trying to think of, you know, was he a big leaguer? It was a big leaguer. Okay. I get a team? Sure. Astros. Left-hander. Can I phone a friend? Closer. 
Nice pitch right there. Unhittable closer. Hall of Fame caliber. I don't want to say because a, Billy a, Wagner. a birdie just said it in my ear, <laughs> so I'm not going to take the credit for, for that. Billy Wagner. Yep. That's big time. That's got to be cool, right? It's got to be cool if you're a pitcher, right? I get to learn from, yeah. from the best. Yeah. I did not know he was coaching high school baseball in Virginia. Put in play, down the line, tailing foul. Giles, remember he pinch ran for Austin Murr. Stays in to play first. Two and two here on Welch. Watch out. Chin music. Paints. Look pretty sharp out there. Said, see, he's got a high ceiling. Yeah, they got to like what they see out of him. Good arm action, too, with the, such a big, tall guy. Said 6'7", works downhill pretty well. Good movement on his fastball. Get there, get there, get there. Giles getting a workout over there. Just coming into the ball game, but no chance to make that catch. We'll do it over again. Payne at 6'7", of course, the question for all these, these tall pitchers that you see. Did he play high school basketball? Yes. Also played volleyball in high school. You know, I wish... Have you ever watched men's volleyball? Absolutely. It is incredible to watch. Talk about some athletes. Yeah. You got to be 6'7", or you got to be able to jump out of the gym. <laughs> yeah, being 6'7", definitely helps. Good at bat right there. Yeah, Welch will work his one out walk. But yeah, that's actually a sport. And Garrett was actually the founder of a men's volleyball club in high school. Because you just don't see it played. I know, like, at my high school, we did not have men's volleyball. Yeah, I can't say we did either. His dad played. Club volleyball at Virginia. Obviously, volleyball runs in the blood. But that's a sport, honestly, that's a sport that I would really like to see uh, more of because as a as a play-by-play -play broadcaster, volleyball is one you of my apps. It's absolutely one of my favorite is sports it? to do. Yeah. And so, like, is why? What, for me, for, from my perspective, I'm like, why not? I call men's and women's soccer. Yeah. I yeah. love calling women's volleyball. It is would be it, fun to call men's volleyball, too. There's not as many opportunities. Is it just the action of volleyball? that? It's just a great sport. Yeah. Yeah. But I also love calling baseball. Very different sport to call. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just a little bit longer. It's it's very different sport to call. Drumheller with a base hit into right field. That'll drop down in front of, front of Brown and put runners on the corners with one out. And baseball is a much more conversational game, you know, where we talk about 
ducks on the pond originated by <laughs> from the washington senators you know 1940s play-by-play -play broadcaster yeah you don't have that in volleyball do you no, no it's it's not it's point that. to point it's it's point to point and uh a lot of fast paced action and that's fun too they're both fun but for different reasons you know So baseball is not just the, of course, it's not just the, you know, the conversation. It's the, it's the game within the game. Uh, that, I, that's I know the I don't best part. You that, you yeah, know. that's, that's what I absolutely love. Watching baseball, coaching it. That ball is smoked right back up the middle. But Gowan, he's, hey, we've said it. He's, he's been playing well from the very beginning of this game. Uh, and that's starting to show up. He got that infield single back in the sixth. And now here he is, just scalds one up the middle. And that'll drive in Welch. And now Robbie Young up. College debut for Payne. Got the strikeout to start things off, but since then, walk. A couple of singles. And here's Young, who's 0 for 3. Speaking of baseball being so conversation-driven, saw something the other day. Wanted, wanted your thoughts on it. Somebody said that baseball broadcasters were the original podcasters because they just show up and talk about whatever <laughs> for three hours. Yeah, you're probably right on that. <laughs> yeah, I. and podcasts are huge now, right? Like, everyone's jumping into the podcast game. Well, I think especially with it was already becoming a thing. Quarantine. And then with quarantine, everybody said, I got a bunch of extra time on yeah, my I hands. Gotta, I'm going to make my podcast about my – I mean, people have different interests. Let me get my microphone set up in the house and go to town. If you had a podcast – what would it be about? What's what's your niche? Would it be about baseball? I don't think I really have a niche. Would it be a specific, you know, would it be about Yankees baseball, for no, instance? Or? No. I don't watch enough Yankees baseball now. As Payne will get his first collegiate K. Second of the Second, end. sorry. Back up there, idle. It wouldn't be a counting podcast for you. Nope, it would not. <laughs> Math is not my forte. Yeah, I'll stick with sports. I mean, you know? I know you're into the, the grill recently. Ah, oh, the Traegers. Do a podcast oh, on grilling, maybe? Made some beef jerky last night. Yeah. To hear more about it, <laughs> listen. check up. out the Apple Play Store. <laughs> <laughs> I hear your iTunes podcast. Do you have a pod? Do you have like a go-to podcast that you listen to right now? Um... Or do you listen to podcasts? I listen, yeah, I do. I listen to a little mix of them, mostly when, I, when I'm trying to fall asleep, honestly. Interesting. Philip Cole, down nothing in two. And, and it works great because sometimes I have trouble falling asleep. So the goal is to fall asleep. So if I fall asleep quickly, then so you try to find a mission point. success. But if I you know, stay up for 30 minutes, I learn something. <laughs> so I, I try to get like educational type, you know. Yeah, I should probably start listening to some educational ones. I'm not listening to, like, comedic podcasts at some point. You know, I'm not trying to, like, laugh myself yeah. to sleep. It's more, I might do, like, a, you know, like a history podcast or a news podcast or mm. something. You know. mm. Maybe a college baseball podcast. There you go. I'm a big fan of the uh, Pat McAfee show. Not sure if you've ever listened up to that one, but yeah. hysterical. Funny guy, punter yeah. for the Colts. Two and two here on Young. How about that? Garrett Payne, college debut. He strikes out the side. He gets idle, Young, and Cole down on strikes.
13 to 2, NC State leading App State. And this is not for the game. This is just in the sixth inning. Nine runs on seven hits. Three walks drawn. 13 batters coming to the plate. That's an entire day's worth of offensive output in one inning. Yeah, that really broke the game open, obviously. Nine runs. But, you know, like you said, you know, App State kept it close for as long as they possibly could. A couple walks, a couple hits. Next thing you know, you're down, you know, 13-1. Game just out of reach at the moment. It's been a bullpen day for App State, and they will go to the bullpen once again. Eli Ellington, left-hander. There he is. Left-hander will face the lefty Johnny Butler here. The bottom of the eighth. So Ellington gets the last inning for App State. Of course, that is if the scoreline holds. And as uh, you predicted, maybe that could be your podcast, Andrew's Predictions. Uh, you said you would run out of room on your scorebook. And I sure did. There you go. Pitcher number eight of the evening. Yellington, a 6'5 redshirt junior from Charlotte. Butler lines it right to the shortstop Welch for out number one. So Ellington actually began his career at Charlotte. Uh, he redshirted in 2018. He did not pitch in 2019, so he transferred to Gulf Coast State Junior College and pitched there in 2020. He's a big part of this Mountaineer bullpen. You see his numbers and what he has done. Yeah, just another big strike thrower. 26 Ks to nine walks. Just got to keep the ball down the zone. And so being from Charlotte, it's not a bad drive up to Boone at all. An hour or so. So he's still pretty close to home. Tough catch by Drumheller. He makes it for out number two. Over the shoulder catch to take away that one from falling in softly. That's a really tough play for a, you know, we talked about the Bermuda Triangle before out there in left field. That is a certainly Bermuda Triangle. You know, if you're the right fielder in pole, that's, that's got to be your ball. You got to be calling him off there to just to make the simpler play. Tatum in the left should end the inning. And it will. McGowan squeezes it for out number three. To the ninth we go. Wolfpack lead by 11. Here's a look at what NC State has coming up next. This weekend at BC. And the next weekend at Notre Dame. NC a and T here at home. You can watch it on ACC Network Extra in between. So a couple of road ACC series before returning home against Virginia Tech. Games on ACC Network April 23rd to 25th. And then the rematch between NC State and App State. First time ever NC State going to be in Boone playing baseball. So we look forward to that one. Yeah, it'll be a nice trip up there to Boone. Get to experience that nice field they have. Brand new all turf. New pitcher for NC State, Logan Bender, another guy that they kind of relied on a little bit last year. Coming off what I assume is, you know, just kind of working his way back into this rotation. Said so NC State starting to get some arms back from a very thin bullpen. 
This is one of the guys that they are hoping to get back to 100%. Yeah, former freshman All-American at Campbell. He'll face the bottom of the Mountaineer order. Aiden Cross, Alex Leshock, and Andrew Terrell. This is a pinch hitter, Trent Lewis. Freshman from Sebring, Florida. Nice spot. My grandparents used to live in Sebring. Really? You know, everybody retires down to Florida. Yeah. I spent a couple years same. down there. Grandfather lives in Clearwater. We're right outside go. Clearwater. Oh, he is from Sebring. To Avon Park High School down there. The 2 1 from Bender takes a cut at it. So you were joking about the national championship game. We've had a, a three hour, 15 minute baseball game. Yep. And we still aren't quite to where the national championship game tipped off last <laughs> night. <laughs> it's, it's ridiculous. Did you stay up and watch the whole thing? Yeah. Uh, well. But good on you. I mean, good on you. I mean, the, I work a different schedule yeah, than than sure. you know. I don't I don't work a nine to five, um, so it does it does work out where I can stay up a little later. It's strong contact made by Lewis. And I mean, I'm regularly calling baseball games until you know. Nine ten o'clock, anyways. So just normal. I stay. I just stay up later than you. I don't have a newborn <laughs> at home. No, you do not. <clears throat> yeah, I just um, you know the girls' game Sunday night, six o'clock tip off. Yep. It's done by eight. Yep. Perfect. No can't argument be, for me. Can't be normalized that. Oh, Bender. It's another pinch hitter here. Vasily Kalutis. Yeah, just a slider that he, his slider is a, a plus plus slider. Obviously starts out a little bit too far inside. I don't mind a six o'clock start time for baseball in fact i i really enjoy it but for you is this is this a little too late no no well i'm fine right now you don't I, i'm you good the, the caffeine the sugar i will be going to bed right when i get home <laughs> i can tell you that you got oh. left leftover easter candy in your pocket just to, <laughs> just to keep you <laughs> yeah. up i did i did have a few snickers on the way over here yeah I think that probably made for a better broadcast, you know? Yeah. You're not you when you're hungry. I think that was, I think that was the market <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Grab a Snickers. Grab him a Snickers. Okay. Some defensive changes for NC State. Obviously, Logan Bender on the mound. Noah Souls is in left. Danny Carnazzo filling in for Luca Tresh. Carson Falskin is at second. There's the freshman, Falskin. Darrell got just a piece. Strike two. And there's the slider that Bender is known for. That's a great job by Terrell laying off that pitch with two strikes. A 
Uh, he'll keep it rolling. First hit of the game for Terrell. So he threw an inning and two-thirds on the mound. Scoreless baseball. Struck out four. And he's got a hit. Like you said, he's a two-way player. Yeah, it's a solid night. A real uh, Otani type. <laughs> he's not out there throwing 101 miles per hour, but hey. hey, not many people are these days. It's also scary. More are probably throwing that fast than are not. I don't think you'll see a guy coming out of the bullpen under 95 these days. Yeah. It's a, incredible to see every single night in the big leagues. Dalton Williams pinch hitting for Peyton Idle. The North Gaston High School product pops up and out of play. He's been a part-time DH this year. Five starts all at DH. As a freshman, he made 27 starts as a designated hitter, did Williams. So he's pinch hitting for Peyton Idol, who, in doing my research, I think Peyton Idol had the, the most fun fact about him. I didn't got? work it into the broadcast, but it's an 11-run game, so I'll, I'll get it in now. What do we got? The leadoff hitter, Idol, once won a mutton-busting title at a rodeo in King, North Carolina. So he's a mutton-busting champion. Uh, can you explain what that is? Sure, sure. It's a lot like bull riding. Okay. But it's for kids. There is typically... Uh, a helmet as Bender strikes out Williams. Typically some protective gear, right? And think of it as trying to ride the bull, except it's sheep. Now for the Here's three, that sounds unbelievable. That sounds like a lot of fun. Yeah. <laughs> and he's a champion. Good. So anyways, Good there, there are fun facts and then there are more fun facts. I mean, uh, that, is, that is the funnest fact. Do I need to start getting my little son? Yeah. Go buy a sheep. Go to the rodeo. Go to the busted. rodeo. Yep. Because I'm looking this up because I didn't I didn't know. And uh, there saw some video of it. I was like, man, I would have had a blast <laughs> doing that as a kid. <laughs> and it's it's like young kids. You know, it's not. I'm not talking like 12. I'm talking like five, six, seven. Oh, so it's. I mean, right now I gotta. I have a computer in front of me. <laughs> I feel like I need to look this up. Welch puts it out of play. But I, you know, I, mean, I just, I learned, so honestly, I had not heard of that. Um, I thought that was, that was very cool. The title of this uh, video is Lamb Chopped. <laughs> Boo. I mean, that's incredible. If you haven't already, you should definitely look up some videos of Mutton Bustin' on YouTube. These kids are strapped to the back of a sheep like there's no tomorrow. <laughs> Good for them. That's incredible. Good for him for being a champion. Ball and two strikes on Welch. Bender trying to Finish this game off. Just outside, ball two. But yeah, that was in my notes. I was like, probably won't ever use this, but I learned something cool. I'm glad you You did. know how I like to do my research. Yeah, you, you know, do. Learn, you learn, do great learn research. things. And, and, I'm, I'm uh, glad you brought that out. I said, well, if he comes back up, I'll use it. Two balls, two strikes, two out, two on for the Mountaineers. High ball three.
On the ground to Torres at short. <laughs> NC State defeats App State 13 to 12 to 13 to 2 the final score. And the Wolfpack winning in the midweek, and it's a special one for Elliott Avent. Win number 900 of his career at NC State. Yeah, congratulations to Coach Avent, 900th career win at NC State. Just a overall great game by NC State coming out, carrying over that momentum they had from Sunday, getting another solid start from Chris Villeman. That is exactly what you're looking for in your midweek games. Chris Villeman, the winning pitcher, his second win of the year, second strong start in a row, six innings, seven strikeouts. It was the nine-run sixth that did it for NC State. 13 to two, the final. Congratulations to Coach Avent on win number 900. This has been a presentation of ESPN.